Steel thorns grow on the earth, the roaring sound of gears biting resounds through the sky, black thick smoke obscures the clouds, scorching steam flows rapidly in the pipes, super analysis machines and password cards emit delicate murmurs, and the blazing white light composes the rings of the times here. The red fluid suppresses the throat of fate, the justice of bolts and rivets, the authority of caliber and range, steel roars, and sharp swords roar. Keywords of the Novel Steel Steam and Flame with no pop-ups, complete collection download of Steel Steam and Flame TXT, latest chapter reading of Steel Steam and Flame. Chapter 1 Wedge You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Wedge The winter of this year was extremely cold. During the cold winter in the Manoma region, the cold season airflow from the right dot sided continent passed through the Central Ocean Current Zone and was brought here by more magnificent natural forces, eroding the vegetation and ground of the entire area. The cold wind has been blowing for a whole month, but there is still no trace of wanting to calm down. The boiler factory in the west of the city works overtime, and the rolling black smoke rises, blocking the sky, making the world under the cold winter seem to have no dawn. A series of grey armoured trains carrying black coal come more frequently than in previous years. Old Ram sat in the duty room, holding hot water bags tightly in his arms, and the heating supply was turned to its maximum by him. He stared blankly at the white grey mottled glass windows embedded in the copper walls, covered in cold ice and unable to see the outside of the house. There is a low dot temperature thermometer next to the window, which shows an indoor temperature of 10 degrees and an outdoor temperature of minus 14 degrees. It's really not a human life. May the Holy Emperor hear our prayers and let this damn weather go to hell soon. Old Ram cursed, his hands involuntarily shrinking. Then the bright red indicator light lit up without warning, and it wasn't until the metal door was heavily knocked on that Old Ram knew a train had entered the station. The cold wind outside made the dilapidated shed of the railway station creak. The cold wind carried ice debris as if it was about to cut a person's cheek. Old Rom had a hundred reluctances on his face and ten thousand fears. If it weren't for being held up by a rock-hard man, he wouldn't want to come out of the duty room. But who could have imagined that it would be almost evening when an army would bravely run to this dilapidated train station in minus fourteen degrees Celsius weather? And without saying a word, he was dragged out by two people. He trembled as he opened the three locked iron door surrounded by a group of giant soldiers. On the railway track is a huge black train without any markings. Lao Ram has been working here for decades, and it is the first time he has seen such a huge train. The body is four meters high, and the whole body is welded with hard iron sheet, like a black scaled python walking on the ground. The railway tracks also emit unbearable murmurs under it. The front of the car not far ahead is still spewing strong and scorching steam, and the light of the three giant headlights is piercing through the wind and snow, shooting into the distance. The first few carriages and the following ones are all soldiers, and the goods are closely guarded in the middle of the train. The soldiers are standing by the window looking at Old Rom's side. At the unloading dock, the goods seem to be some huge machinery, tightly wrapped in several layers of dark green rainproof cloth, tightly fixed to the train iron frame through steel cables and nails, bulging high as if they were about to break through several layers of rainproof cloth at any time, totaling three piles. Entering the platform, Old Rom lit up gas lamps one by one. By the light, all the soldiers behind them were wearing thick military cotton jackets. Except for the leader, everyone else was wearing a face mask with a crow-like beak. The protruding glasses on it were also covered with a layer of white frost, but it did not hinder the beastly sharp gaze exposed inside. They carried long muskets on their backs, with snowy military spears on their waists and black gum leather boots on their soles, wrapping their ankles and lower calves completely. The leader was wearing golden framed glasses, and in addition to the stabbing sword at his waist, Old Rom also saw a short fire weapon. They are all elites in the military, Old Rom muttered to himself as he took out his password card and inserted it into the differential machine, according to their requirements, to eliminate the record of this train entering the station. 
Encountering the army to receive equipment is not something that happens once or twice, but in old Rom's intuition, the level this time is definitely much higher than the previous few times. There was no sound on the entire platform except for the wind, and everyone was waiting for old Rom to clear the record and leave before starting unloading the goods. Old Rom certainly knew about this, and he also wanted to quickly finish his work and go back to the duty room to drink a few cheap wines to warm his body. But being stared at by a hundred pairs of wild wolf-like eyes, in this cold winter and minus fourteen degrees Celsius temperature, a layer of fine sweat seeped out from behind him. It really takes human life. Old Rom's heart trembled. After finally seeing the differential machine spit out the password card, Old Rom pulled it out and nodded to the leading officer, immediately lifting his foot to leave. I don't know if it's due to the temperature, but the iron nail that nailed the rainproof cloth tightly suddenly broke at this moment. The crisp sound of the golden iron tapping quickly spread in the wind, and the rainproof cloth was immediately blown open by the fierce cold wind. At almost the same moment, the soldiers closest to Old Rom immediately erupted in a frenzy, transmitting information from the white matter of their brains, then converting it into electrical signals, which were transmitted through nerves to various muscles and joints in their bodies, and moving behind him at a speed that seemed to synchronize with the knocking sound. It seems that at the moment when the rainproof cloth was just blown away by the wind, the scenery below could be seen in Old Rom's eyes. The soldier stood behind Old Rom, and a knife had already hit him in the back of the neck. Old Rom woke up in the duty room. At that time, he was lying on the chair, holding a water bag that had already become cold. The duty room only had the whirring of the heating pipes and the ticking of mechanical copper bells on the walls. The copper clock shows that it is already eleven o'clock at night. There was no sound of wind coming from outside the window, and the cold winter wind finally subsided. How am I here? Old Rom rubbed his still slightly painful neck hard, then picked up a bottle of wine next to him and took a deep sip. He then picked up the gas lamp, turned off the heating valve, and hurriedly walked out of the duty room. However, the platform was already pitch black, and the huge train parked there was nowhere to be seen. The iron door was also locked tightly, and the key was hanging around his waist. Those soldiers have already left. Hey, what the hell is going on? Old Rom only felt a headache when he thought about it, but only had a vague impression of the past few hours. He opened the door for the soldier himself, followed the rules to eliminate records on the differential machine, and then returned to the duty room and fell asleep. He always felt like there was something missing from it, but he couldn't remember it. Whenever he thought about it, he felt confused, as if he was about to explode, with pain in his tarsal bones. But at the right time, alcohol played a role. When he returned home, he slept soundly and by the time he woke up the next morning, he had already forgotten all about it. Until one day six months later, it was already early summer. Still in the duty room, the heating supply has turned into air conditioning, and outside the window are travelers coming and going. Old Rom still sat on that chair. The postman walked past and handed in a newspaper from the window. He moved his body to pick it up and opened it with one hand. Several important events were bolded in large font. The current Holy Emperor Nicholas Freire passed away, and the new Holy Emperor was Elro Astis. The Kingdom of Mano was officially renamed as the St. Dorag Empire. King Yadu Astis of the St. Dorag Empire announced the abolition of the Gregorian calendar and the use of the Holy Calendar. This year's Gregorian calendar year 1879 is the year zero of the Holy Calendar. The St. Dorag Empire Dorag Old Rom looked at the black ink print on the newspaper and whispered these three words, which seemed to have some strange magic. In a thunderous moment, Old Rom felt a change in the scenery before him, as if he had returned to that night half a year ago. At that time, he took out his password card, and as he turned around, he heard a sound of metal tapping. Then, the raincoat was blown away by the cold wind, and the soldiers beside him were so fast that their bodies turned into remnants. Under the rainproof cloth, Old Rom truly saw a huge claw covered in black iron like fine scales, 
reflecting a faint light under the gas lamp, like a fine craft artwork, lying quietly on the iron frame of the train, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Starting Point You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Starting Point Last night, there was just a heavy snowfall, and the haze gathered in the dark sky finally vented, so today has finally had a rare good weather. The air was washed clean and there was no longer the pungent smell of the past, and the black smoke from the steam boiler plant was completely covered under the snow. The black and gloomy small town the day before suddenly became bright and shiny today, dressed in a layer of white attire. Standing on the street, the blue sky is like a bottomless lake, and from the horizon, one can clearly see towering snow-capped mountains. Occasionally, huge grey-blue airships tear open the huge cold air flow in the air, slowly sweeping over the mountainside, and then hear several high whistling sounds, these despicable merchants are not afraid of causing an avalanche on Mount Larak. A voice of anger came from beside them. The people who woke up early to shovel snow on both sides of the broad road laughed at the sound. They finished shoveling the snow and began to finish work one after another. Kasha shook her head and smiled, shoveling the small amount of snow on the road in front of the house. She patted it a few times to compact it, and then stepped on her cheap rubber-soled boots, which were already covered in snow, walking towards the door behind her with the shovel. Placing the shovel at the door, Kasia took off her rubber shoes and gently opened the wooden door panel in front of her, which was quite old. She quietly stepped inside and pulled the door back with her hand. Thick dark curtains cover the window, and no natural light can penetrate through the fabric. The room was very dark, with only the silently burning stove in the middle contributing a faint light and heat, coating this narrow dwelling with an imperceptible layer of dim yellow light. There are heating pipes installed in the house, accompanied by a large pendulum copper bell playing a non-dot-stop lullaby. Kasha's mother was sleeping soundly on the side of the fireplace, her breathing evenly fluctuating. Because the empire's reorganization is about to arrive, all factories in the small town are working overtime, and the textile factory where Kasha's mother is located has also been working hard in the past few days. His mother has been coming back late at night these days. The aristocratic masters who manage textile factories will not pity these low and lowly civilian productivity. In their eyes, the lowly civilians, like the countless steam machinery that permeates the empire, are just machines that should work non-dot-stop until they are scrapped for their wealth. No one would expect the upper echelons of the empire to bestow favor on the lowest class of civilians. The empire itself is like most nobles, and the common people themselves are the same. Their extravagant hope is only that these factories can give them their rightful compensation on time, without looking for various strange reasons to interfere with it, and deduct a part of it. On the other side of the fireplace, beneath the thick cotton quilt, the petite body of Kasia's sister Lilia was also bulging. In front of the neat pillow, a pair of black and agile eyes were staring at Kasia, deep like a night without dawn, pure like the frozen lake in early spring, but at this moment, there was a hazy feeling of not being fully asleep inside. Due to her fear of the cold, she tightly held the cotton quilt with her two small hands, allowing the warm blanket to tightly wrap herself, leaving only a pair of eyes and a pair of curved eyebrows above, as well as a scattered piece of hair on her forehead exposed outside the quilt. Kasha made a silent gesture, gesturing for her sister to continue sleeping. Lilia nodded, her black eyes blinked before falling back into a hazy state. Walking lightly into her small room, which was separated from the room, Kasha pulled on a thick dark blue curtain to light up the gas lamp in front of the table. On one side of the table were several thick books, mostly about steam mechanical transmission and the history of theology. The tattered marks on them showed that they had been read countless times. On the other side, there was an admission letter written in hot gold font, which read. Kasia Tussos, congratulations on being admitted to our affiliated institution, Imperial Heavy Industry School. Please report to our school on February 12, 1096 according to the Gregorian calendar. The signature is. St. Dorag Military School. 
military academies, the highest point of output for the empire's military force, and also the largest source of the most elite soldiers in the empire's history. It is the only school in the empire that can be on par with the St. Dorag Theological Seminary. If the seminary represents the highest level of technology, commanders, politicians, merchants, agents, etc. in the empire, then the military academy represents the highest level of military force, soldiers, generals, assassins and imperial heavy industry is one of the military academies affiliated with the Ministry of War, majoring in mechanical heavy industry and various types of mechanical manufacturing. Simply put, it is weapon manufacturing. Firearms, cold weapons, heavy trucks, light and heavy armor, airships, cruisers, ships, electrical appliances, and all the components on all the equipment, whether they have already appeared in front of people or the secret war readiness storage of the military, are mostly marked with the logo of Emperor Heavy Industry. This is the strength of Imperial Heavy Industry, and also the reason why it is called the factory of the Empire's sub-era. Accompanied by the Empire's over 800 years of history, its heritage and strength are also unquestionable. When Kasia received this heavy admission letter from the postman, she already understood that it was not only an opportunity for her to soar to fame, but more importantly, it was also an opportunity for her mother and sister to live a better life. My own father died on the battlefield five years ago, and the father of Kasia, who was originally a second lieutenant, should have received an extremely generous family pension. But from the news of his father's death in battle to the fact that this money was distributed by the Empire, passed through layers of government agencies, and arrived at Kasia and the others, the extremely generous pension only left a small amount of money. They are a group of despicable and shameless blood flies, living off decaying corpses. Any creature that passes through their territory will flock to them, stretch out their ugly mouthparts to take a bite, and then fall intoxicated at their resting place, with a hazy look in their crowded compound eyes. And it turned out that the residence distributed by Kasia's father, a second lieutenant, was also forcibly taken back when his father died. Dead people cannot create any value for the empire. Only by living can they enjoy the rights and wealth of their position. Dead means everything is overthrown, and the only thing left is a simple record in the records of the Imperial Army. And this record is just the storage capacity of five small gears combined in the storage of the super analysis machine. Kasia's father's life ultimately turned into five gears made of red copper, finely polished, processed, and plated with silver. Kasia can still vividly remember five years ago when she was kicked out of the house by several government officials. The entire floor of the residence tightly held on to their children and came out quietly to watch the three of them quietly pack their luggage and leave the floor, until they were engulfed and disappeared by the building. The eyes of these people were deeply imprinted in the young Kasha's mind, filled with sympathy and unbearable emotions, but more importantly, they were filled with fear that penetrated through their eyes and reached the depths of their hearts. Because their husbands are also on the front line. Kasha and her companions will also face their fate at some point. Then Kasha followed her mother with a huge suitcase, her mother carrying a heavy backpack and holding Lilia with tears in her arms. The three of them traveled together to the rear of the Empire, a small town at the foot of the Lilac Mountains, a border that only had winter and summer. Kasha felt the weight of life for the first time, continuing her studies at a local school while working at a small town steam machinery factory. Five years have passed in a blink of an eye, from working hard as a laborer at the most basic level to applying knowledge from books to become a skilled worker. Just like the winter and summer alternation of Mount Larak, silent and traceless. Picking up a few slices of bread, he swallowed the cold water from last night and changed into a simple work uniform made of coarse cloth. Kasia quietly went out to start working. At this moment, Lilia was already immersed in a deep sleep. The huge chimney of the steam factory continuously emits thick black smoke, and the alternating work of morning and evening makes the factory always the longest surviving creature in the small town. A factory has never been a clean and tidy place. The roar of huge gears biting together, the air filled with scorching steam and thick smoke, the dark and damp ground underfoot, 
the steam machinery with various gears hanging on the huge and bulky shaft parts, the intricate and complex metal pipes with a layer of rust attached to the surface, the rusty spots on the entire palm that can be dyed red with just a touch, the various valve interfaces that still intermittently spray hot air, the countless indicator lights that constantly flash, dazzling red and disturb people's minds, and more importantly, the curses filled with vulgar language that can always linger in the ears this is the driving force and heart that supports the prosperity and invincibility of the empire. The popularization and development of industry have reached an unprecedented level, and the manufacturing of various types of machinery is the greatest guarantee for imperial citizens to survive and reproduce in countless harsh natural environments. After the outbreak of the War of Creation, the St. Dorag Empire was able to rise rapidly in just a few decades on the later continent, rapidly annexing the territories of dozens of neighboring countries with unparalleled momentum, and entering the ranks of powerful countries on the later continent in one fell swoop. The tremendous development of industry played an irreplaceable role in promoting it. The factory where Kasha is located is one of the millions of steam factories on the imperial continent. The small factory is a matchbox-like building, wrapped in layers of refurbished iron sheet sprayed with blue paint. The steel frame door is wide open, and the hot air spurts into white smoke at the entrance, mixed with a strong smell of engine oil and rust, soaring into the sky. The workers under the iron sheet were bustling with enthusiasm. Keja wore a yellow safety hat, and the small head of the factory was named Vici. He stood next to a forging machine with his iconic big head bare, holding a product record book in his hand to calculate the output of work that should be completed today. Keja, we're going to Manoma in a few days. Hurry up and contribute more to this dying old factory. Vici saw Keja enter, so he took up the number plate placed on the forging machine with one hand and threw it at Keja. Kasha took the sign and walked with a smile, revealing a row of pure white teeth. The nearby forging machine fell heavily, causing the entire factory to shake along with it. Although there are shock dot absorbing devices that are more than 10 meters deep underground beneath the huge machinery, the force of the dozens of tons of iron blocks lifted by the steam turbine falling down is indeed not completely counteracted by human machinery. Subsequently, several thick white mist sprayed out from the valve, as if the pressure from the deep sea had caused it to spew out several meters before it finally subsided. The steam turbine started, and a huge iron block was lifted. Dozens of people immediately surrounded it. Several adult thigh-thick iron chains lifted a roughly formed giant gear and slowly moved it to the next processing machine. After further fine processing and flame treatment to eliminate internal stress, this gear can be transported as a standard piece to the front of the empire. Kasha skillfully shuttled between several machines and finally arrived at the bottom of the factory building, where there were no huge machinery standing tall, and there was almost no vibration, only patches of indicator lights. Before arriving at her position, Kasia put on thin white gloves, took out the key hanging from her neck, and opened the locked drawer. Inside was a dense collection of fine tools, as well as a password card embedded with hundreds or thousands of precision gears. Unveiling the soft white cloth covering the table, below is an unfinished perpetual calendar mechanical watch, with thirteen small parts missing. This watch is considered complete. I came into contact with watchmaking when Kasha still had his father's memories. As a second-level lieutenant, my father has a basic military-made perpetual calendar watch that can be used to check dates, months, years, central ocean currents, and stars at any time. Astrology can roughly infer the weather trends of the past few days, which is very important information for merchants and armies using airships. Because the airships that fought against natural forces eventually turned into wreckage. At that time, when her father returned, Keja would be very interested in using a magnifying glass to observe a pile of intricately working gears on the dial. Later on, several books on precision learning of clocks and watches accumulated all of Keja's knowledge of clock assembly. Getting this job, which can be considered easy and well paid, has definitely helped with childhood interests. The installation of 13 gears took almost a day for Keja, until the dusk of the small town was about to fall, and Keja finally completed the installation. 
Finally, with enough time to wipe off the fine sweat oozing from her forehead, Kasia didn't have time to rest. She then took out the password card from the drawer, pulled out the steam outlet connected by the rubber hose next to the table, and inserted the red copper interface into the interface of the password card. The gear condensed in the password card rapidly rotates as it connects to the steam outlet, as if it has endless vitality. Then Kasia inserted it into the slot in front of her body, which was the Zero Differential Machine, the last model of the Empire's differential machine, with computing power at the peak of differential machines, and then placed it under the feet of any type of analysis machine. But for such small factories, the performance of the Zero Differential Machine is completely sufficient. A calculation branch of the Zero Differential Machine has been activated, and the password card is loaded with a program for adjusting the accurate time, month, year, and astrological ocean currents using a perpetual calendar watch. Artificial adjustment of time can result in significant errors, which are naturally amplified infinitely. So for the adjustment of such fine clocks, reliable programs have always been used instead. The machinery in front of the table began to operate, with six golden hexagonal copper pillars forming a pointed six-pointed angle. Kasia picked up the watch, and the six transmission pillars seamlessly integrated into the clock before slowly turning. The display on the clock is starting to change. The precise adjustment of a watch takes about one night, and there is no backlog of work at the moment. Kasia is preparing to go back to accompany her sister Lilia. A few days passed quietly like this. A few days later in the afternoon, the atmosphere in the factory remained unchanged. Kasia was holding tweezers and using a magnifying glass to install a certain gear. The metal instruments stacked on the desktop suddenly began to vibrate, followed by the sound of rustling and rubbing against each other. Subsequently, the vibration did not disappear and the amplitude began to gradually increase. Finally, the entire factory was quiet at this moment, except for the sound of high dot pressure gas gushing from the air valve. The vibrations with a certain peculiar pattern spread through the veins of the earth and spread to every corner of the small town, truly reaching everyone's body through the earth. So, after a moment of sudden silence, the tranquil atmosphere of the small town transformed into a still-life painting, finally regaining its vitality in an incredibly high and clear whistle that seemed to pierce through the air and tear apart countless buildings. The sound of the whistle was like lightning in a black stormy night, illuminating the entire small town in an instant. The people in the factory started cheering and cursing, while the residents in the small town started celebrating with joy. The only imperial reshuffle of the year has finally arrived. On the quiet afternoon of January 2, 1096 in the Gregorian calendar. There are several chapters that have been blocked and are still being processed. I cannot read them from the starting point here. You can go to other websites to see the blocked chapters. End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Trains. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 Trains The clear whistle echoed higher and higher in the slightly cloudy sky, as if it could tear open the sky. The huge tremor came to a halt in a few minutes, and the Empire's reorganization officially came to a halt. At this moment, all the people in the small factory put down their work and ran out of the factory gate, rushing to the station to watch the excitement. Kasia was no exception. After simply tidying up the utensils on the table, he followed behind the crowd and jogged towards the station. Although I have been in the small town at the foot of the Nalalak Mountains for five years and am not unfamiliar with the Empire's heavy trains, every year I see again the nearly six-meter-high body, steel tracks the size of a light truck, huge and heavy alloy axles connecting them, carefully and skillfully braking devices, and countless steam metal pipes coiled up like angry animal blood vessels, exposed directly to the outside, combined with the carefully welded 15mm special black iron steel. Plates on the car, everything is covered with traces of erosion by various natural forces. The whole train was like a sleeping black dragon, and the strong steam column still gushing at the front was his breath. At this moment, it quietly stopped at the edge of the pitifully small platform in the small town, with tens of thousands of tons of iron blocks like a long dragon on one side. 
No matter how many times you look at it, the feeling of roughness, thickness, simplicity, directness, and shock that it brings to people will never change. This is because since the development of industry, countless scientists in the empire have participated in inventing innovative technology. The super steam compression device, which can only be completed in conjunction with emerging energy electricity. Kasha's heart was filled with excitement and uncontrollable longing. In a few days, he will be taking such a giant train to the Imperial Heavy Industry School. Imagining that such a great machine in the future is highly likely to have its own labor results, Kasia's heart is not only indescribable excitement, but also overflowing with impatience. That is a strong sense of urgency. The 17-year-old boy yearns to go to more bustling areas, see more unexpected and diverse things, and meet more people with diverse personalities and talents. I am also eager to find a well-paid job through the Imperial Heavy Industries brand. His mother and sister are now almost everything in his life, and the 17-year-old boy yearns to be able to carry a warm place with his shoulders that can accommodate them. Until dusk began to fall, the crowd began to disperse. The station was brightly lit all night, and various textile and industrial goods that had been hoarded for more than half a year had to be cleared and exchanged for cheaper raw materials and lucrative profits within a few days of being parked on the Imperial Express. In the past few days, the workers who have been busy for a year can finally shake their shoulders and rest easily for a period of time. At this moment, those nobles who had been enjoying themselves all year should be busy and anxious. What are the layers of interest division, the price of goods, the price of raw materials, the harsh handling costs, the insurance amount on the vehicle, the amount given by protective measures, etc. At the school where Sija attended, a theological teacher once said, as long as it involves interests, everyone can become ugly. Let these sharp merchants and harsh nobles handle the affairs of being meticulous and not giving in at all. Children of the same age as Kasia in the small town take advantage of these rare leisure days to finally feel the warmth of family members. Kasia also stays at home every day, and the work in the textile factory and factory has come to a temporary end. Her mother and sister have been staying at home these days to accompany Kasia, helping to organize various luggage. Kasia is also actively preparing. If she goes to Imperial Heavy Industries and studies there, she can immediately find a good job, which can make this aspect of the family much easier. My younger sister Lilia is six years old this year and is also facing the age of going to school. Tuition fees are also a significant expense. Before going to school, Kasia had already consulted information about Imperial Heavy Industries School, and if he could receive the annual student rewards from Imperial Heavy Industries, these issues would be greatly improved. The annual reward for students at Imperial Heavy Industries School is 350,000 holy coins, and more importantly, these students who receive the reward also have the opportunity to enter the St. Dorag Military Academy. The schools of the two highest institutions in the empire receive additional generous subsidies every month. If I could go in myself, it would be a huge help for both my mother and sister. Kasia had a hidden plan in her heart. Five days later, my sister Lilia was clumsily and laboriously writing extremely non-dot-standard fonts on paper with a pencil in her hand. Kasia sat next to her sister, gently rubbing Lilia's head with one hand and gripping Lilia's slender little hand with the other, slowly correcting the spelling of each font. Lilia studies very seriously, but as a child who sometimes still has a runny nose, the progress of her studies cannot be praised. Brother, Ka, Shi, Ya, beside the white paper was a piece of graffiti, with a simple drawing of a little person with a round head and a smiling face. Lilia was writing the name of this little person stroke by stroke below. Kasia watched silently from the side, feeling incredibly calm inside. There is still one day left for such a day. The next day, just as it turned bright, the tranquility of the small town's early morning was shattered by the deafening sound of the whistle. Kasia picked up her luggage from the bed, hesitated for a moment, and cautiously approached the bedside. She took out a simple wooden box from under the bed, which contained a brand new high-dot-strength alloy steel short sword with a black handle and snow-dot-white blade. This was specially made by Vici, 
the small head of the factory, for Kasia a few days ago using parts and scraps. The outside world is much more chaotic than the border areas behind the empire, and there is no sign of war stopping. This short sword is the best for you to use for self.defense. Vici wandered outside for a long time earlier, when he was in middle age, he finally came to the small town at the foot of the lilac mountains to live in despair. After tidying up, my mother and sister are already waiting for me outside. Strolling together on a wide street surrounded by neat bungalows, there were other families taking their children to the direction of the empire's reorganization, but most of them were people who went to work in various parts of the empire. Like Kasia, there were nearly thirty people of the same age in the entire small town, but among them, there were only three who came from civilian backgrounds, plus Kasia. Most of the resources of the empire are controlled by a few nobles. Moreover, Kasia is not yet a legitimate commoner. His father was once a second lieutenant with the lowest baron title, but with his father's death, all of this has passed. The black dragon has awakened, with several steam columns and thick black smoke rising into the sky like twin dragons. The train is full of garbage left over from moving goods in the past few days that has not been cleaned yet. The platform was crowded with people waiting to board the train. Kasha, here, here. Kasha walked into the platform and heard someone calling him. That is one of the three commoners, named Rovi. There was a delicate girl standing in front of Luo Wei, and she nodded gently at Kasia. She was the last of three commoners, named Aaron. Although the three of them have different schools, they have to travel to various parts of the empire, and relisting is the best mode of transportation. The commander in work clothes ahead began to have people carrying heavy luggage board the train one after another. Although there are many people from civilian backgrounds, they are squeezed on the narrow side of the platform when boarding the train. On the other side is a passage specifically designed for the nobility, and the remaining twenty or so students are also among them. They are dressed in gorgeous clothes, whether it is exquisite workmanship or fabric, they are all of excellent quality. The boots were polished to a shiny finish, and even the suitcase seemed to emit a radiance belonging to high-end goods. On the other hand, on Kasia's side, although he had prepared a good set of clothes, he was reluctant to wear them. The shoes are definitely cheap rubber-sold canvas shoes, and the luggage is also made of hard leather rolled and sealed with thick ropes. The most important thing is that the aristocratic passage opened is a formal passenger carriage, while Kasia and his companions are cargo boxes. That's right, they can't afford real passenger car tickets, they can only associate with some goods in simple cargo boxes. And this ticket price is still calculated based on the price of the goods. The price of 22 holy coins per kilogram is the price of ordinary humans. Although I feel somewhat uncomfortable in my heart, I can only accept it. Not long after, these people in the cargo boxes will know that this price is not only applicable when traveling on the Empire Express, but is a standard price in any region of the Empire and in various industries, belonging to humanity. Brother, you must, you must, you must, you must come back. Lilia's eyes were firm, filled with tears. Kasha laughed at the solemn words as she touched Lilia's head and bid them farewell. Stepping into the cargo box, until the heavy steel frame iron door was pulled closed and the faces of her mother and sister were covered by black metal, Kasia's heart suddenly surged with an unbearable feeling. Shaking her head hard to shake off this uncomfortable feeling, Kasia found a nearby spot to sit down. The huge cargo box is divided into three layers. They are on the top floor, where there is quite a lot of space, containing many goods that have already been packed and sealed. Kasha and the others sat on these wooden boxes in groups of three or two. There are several large ventilation openings above the cargo box, and the winter cold wind blows inside, causing paper to fly. Rovi picked up a lot of waste paper with all his hands and feet. Sitting on a bare wooden board was indeed uncomfortable, and using these waste papers to cushion it was also good. Everyone followed suit, and when Kasia finished these things, the last long and steady whistle came, causing the entire cargo box to slowly vibrate. The Empire has sailed out of the station. 
the train carriage swayed steadily, and the metal instruments on the two levels below occasionally made a collision sound. Ro and Eileen sat on the side of Keja. Although the light near the top vent of the carriage was good, the three of them did not have the mood to read. As the empire rearranged, they shook for a while, but fell asleep one after another. The next journey is like this. Every day when there is time, I look at the books in my suitcase, and when I'm hungry, I go to the food storage box to buy some cheap food. Rovi got off the car after the twelfth day and needs to transfer to another location. Two days later, Eileen also got off the car and headed to a nearby city where her school was located. The people in the car got down one by one and then got up one by one. The passengers changed one after another, and only Keja watched her luggage quietly, always sitting in the same seat. Is it really lonely, lonely, or dull? There are no car windows around, only a static view from the roof vent. The people in the carriage have no idea where they have passed through. Only by walking and stopping, can one know that they have arrived at another station, and then there is a loud noise coming from outside. Occasionally, the carriage where one is in will be opened, allowing one to see various station structures. Sometimes when the light at the ventilation outlet becomes dim, one realizes that they have entered a pitch-black tunnel again. If bored, one can count and see how long the tunnel is. As the empire advanced at full speed, one could hear the piercing sound of the wind blowing against the iron sheets outside. When encountering rainstorm weather, you can also wait for a thunderclap in the sound of raindrops hitting the iron sheet. The journey is absolutely boring, and most people in the carriage don't know each other. Everyone is like bamboo shoots that haven't been nourished by spring rain, all buried in the soil, unwilling to reveal a word more. The piercing sound of metal friction came out from below again, and the speed of the empire's reorganization gradually slowed down. Several whistles sounded in a regular manner, and then the faint cheers mixed with overwhelming noise spread into the carriage from afar, with a bustling crowd and a large number of people. Then there were sudden roars, rebukes, and insults like wild beasts, followed by several threatening bursts of honeycomb-style revolvers. So, except for the sound of the train, the station suddenly quieted down. In a moment, more roars, insults, screams, howls, and gunshot explosions erupted in an instant. Kasha placed her luggage tightly under her feet, one hand on her lap, and the other tightly gripping the high alloy short sword behind her. Like the others in the carriage, she waited quietly for the train to stop at the station. As Vici said, even if Kasha didn't see the outside world, she knew it was indeed chaotic. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Meeting You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Meeting A sharp and piercing friction suddenly erupted from the bottom of the train, and the train seemed to take its last breath amidst the noise before finally stopping at the station. The sound outside grew louder and louder at this moment, with angry shouts from men, piercing screams from women, and countless pitiful cries from children. At this moment, it overwhelmed dozens of revolvers still spewing smoke and flames. The station was like a chaotic symphony out of control, with all kinds of emotions, colorful twisted faces, the forehead of the manager with swollen blood vessels, the disdainful and disgusted expressions of the nobles rushing onto the train in the aristocratic passage, and of course, countless silent and gloomy faces intersecting in the truck compartment. Administrator Valendo's forehead under a black leather hat was covered in sweat, and his face turned red from the roar. There were no more goods to transport here, and all he had to take away were refugees. He fired six shots into the sky in a row, with tremendous power and a sound that shook his own ears, but it still made a faint roar towards the group in front of him. A group of people can no longer describe their quantity, it can be said that they are densely packed into a sea of people. The deterrence of handguns has had no effect on them anymore, as they have too many people. The train station is located next to the Visaya fortress, and the sudden outbreak of war in the past few months has led to the birth of a large number of refugees in the entire area. Ordinary people are as weak as ants in front of professional soldiers. The pitifully weak laws of the empire suddenly became ineffective, 
thieves and bandits thrived, the army was flawlessly controlled, factories closed down, and countless people died every day due to war and hunger. Everyone wanted to leave this place that was about to turn into hell. They cannot afford to sit on ordinary passenger trains, only freight cars like the Empire Heavy Train are suitable for them. Valendo set aside the magazine on the pistol and intended to discard the six bullet casings that emitted a pungent smell of gunpowder, replacing them with new brass shell bullets. But the crowd spreading near the entire station has gathered its strength, pushing and embracing like waves constantly crashing on the reef in the sea. The person behind wanted to push forward, so they pushed hard. The person in front wanted to take a step closer and stand in the best position to get on the car, so they used their strength to rush forward. Under this irresistible force, Valendo's body was pushed down by the gripper he was holding, and six bullets landed ping.pong, scattered on the fine wire mesh pedals under his feet. His body involuntarily took a few steps back and collided with the steel control stick that was half a person high on the side. His body's flesh and chubby red face trembled a few times due to the tremendous force. He quickly found balance and stood up, his bloodshot eyes glaring angrily at the crowd just one meter ahead. At this moment, the sweat on his forehead seemed to have evaporated completely from the heat in his angry blood vessels. I saw his bear-like body moving forward, spewing flames of anger. His anger made him unaware of the control stick being pressed down by his body. So behind him, several airflow valves opened and closed, and the unique sound of steam gushed out. Driven by the steam, the steel pulley operated on the track, and several white steam streams continued to emerge from the junction of the door. The thick and ferocious cargo door slowly opened, like a dragon opening its gate, biting its sharp teeth. The third layer of the cargo box, which was one head higher than the platform, finally saw light again. On one side were dozens of pale faces that had strayed, while on the other side were twisted faces that seemed to see heaven and yearn to break free from the constraints of hell. Oh my goodness, it's a big deal now. Under Valen's serious, twisted, and frightened face, he cursed inwardly. The flow of people suddenly turned into huge waves, and the small reef of Valen Road was instantly engulfed. This has become a vent and sent a huge signal. The administrator, with extremely limited manpower, could not resist the crazy crowd. More and more cargo doors were slowly opened under the rhythm of steam, and refugees swarmed in and out, squeezing and pushing. Some were lucky but their shoes with holes were stepped on, some twisted their faces and collapsed in front of the cargo boxes forever, while others were pushed off the platform. A few meters high made them moan in pain, murmuring to the Holy Emperor for help. Volando felt a bitter feeling in his heart, muttering incessantly and cursing, occasionally opening his already hoarse throat to roar a few times. But this cannot change the current fact that the station has completely lost control. Even though his body was huge and thick, he still had no resistance before the surging waves of people. Just like a small boat swaying on the water in a stormy night, it is in danger of being destroyed at any time. The crowd pushed him forward, with a layer of shoes that had been stepped on under his feet. At this moment, they seemed to transform into sea sand and surged into the cargo box with the power of the huge waves. Valendo felt like he was about to be squeezed into a pancake, with a huge sense of pressure emanating from all over his body. What was even more terrifying was the hand he held with the pistol, which could no longer be retrieved from the advancing crowd. The advancing crowd gave his fingers more and more strength and erosion. After taking a few breaths, my fingers finally couldn't hold on and got stuck in the trigger. There was also pain from the squeezing and friction of the left and right streams of people. A few fingers shook and the revolver fell off. Below is a layer of broken shoes, and the fall of the pistol did not make any sound. As soon as the pistol lay on a tattered cotton shoe, one foot kicked it over. The pistol became a byproduct of the wave and began its magical journey in the connected cargo box. These despicable refugees, these damn fools. Valendo cursed in his heart as he finally climbed onto the roof of the cargo box by pulling the door frame. Even a tightly bound rubber shoe could be stepped on, and the buttons on his thick cotton jacket had already broken off. 
He made an effort to run towards the aristocratic area, waving his hands and blowing a steel whistle vigorously in his mouth. On this side of the command center in front of the platform, all the people wearing military cotton jackets looked at the empire reign in front of them, their faces turned pale as they were battered by the wave of people. So many people rushed into the cargo box, but the flow of people behind seemed to be increasing. These are the people surrounded by the low walls of the station who can't even afford to buy container tickets. At this moment, they have also frantically climbed over the low walls, wave after wave climbing up the long platform, trying to get on the train in this chaotic situation. Usually, they don't even have the opportunity to get close to the station because there are troops stationed there for surveillance. But a few months ago, the troops at the station were conscripted due to the spread of war at Visaya Fortress. At this point, the defense forces at the station are just empty shells. Report to the chief, the merchants and nobles have all boarded the train. This sentence seemed like a reminder, suddenly echoing in the command room. Close the cargo door, restart the train, and let these dirty dogs and shit go to hell, the chief said, almost gritting his teeth. It's not because the train station lost control that caused him trouble, but because the refugees who were trampled to death on the ground, if they don't want to be questioned by the authorities, they all have to pay a generous death toll according to their weight. The door of the cargo box slowly closed under the drive of the main control panel, and the airflow valve sprayed steam. The iron frame connecting the platform and the cargo box also slowly closed. A long whistle first plays the background music that belongs to tragedy. The people in front wanted to stop, but the force of the crowd was unstoppable as they fell off the platform. The people behind couldn't see the situation in front, only heard the sound of steam spraying out and the sound of sirens. The train seemed to be about to leave, which made them even more crazy. This is a passage filled with human bodies. The platform is four meters away from the train rail, and there is a distance of three meters from the arrival box door. But in just about ten breaths, the huge cavity between the platform and the train was filled with a human body. More people are stepping on soft human bodies, thinking it's just a layer of stacked rubber shoes. The rearrangement has slowly started, and they want to climb onto the cargo box and then enter through the open ventilation opening. The still red furnace was activated again, and the massive body made a creaking sound. The metal-like shiny steel rails slowly rolled forward, and the soft human body in front of him was weak and powerless like air. The train finally escaped from the station. People who didn't get on the car chased after them, crying, cursing, and pleading. The person getting on the car feels fortunate, joyful, and relaxed in their heart. Only a layer of bright red minced meat on the railway is speechless. Damn it! The general was in a bad mood. The railway was piled up with corpses, and cleaning it up was a considerable expense. And Kasia's luck was very good. The cargo box he was in was not opened, and the ventilation was closed by someone who had noticed it beforehand. A large number of people came in from the channels connecting the left and right sides of the cargo box. The originally spacious space suddenly became extremely crowded. Kasia's face was a bit rosy. Although his body was also very strong, he was still squeezed in a corner next to the cargo box, and the ventilation was closed making the air appear unusually dry and dull. He silently stared at the luggage under his feet, and the people on both sides were squeezed with pale faces, full of traces eroded by the cold wind. A few consecutive whistles were sounded, and in a very short time, it had already accelerated to the fastest speed. As soon as we left the station, there was a blizzard and the ventilation was opened again. The cold air poured in, but everyone's faces clearly breathed a sigh of relief. Someone is murmuring to themselves in the cargo box, praying to the Holy Emperor that it is his mercy and radiance to come up from the cargo box. Kasha leaned back against the cargo box, his eyelids getting heavier and heavier. He really wanted to take a nap and rest. His feet, which had not touched the ground for more than ten days, began to swell, even though he had to exercise for a moment every day but he knew that at least now was not the time to sleep. The new passengers had already breathed a sigh of relief in their hearts, 
and they began to scrutinize and observe for four weeks. Their eyes were like those of a hungry wolf who had been hungry for more than ten days. He was afraid that when he woke up, there would be only two pieces of hard leather left in the suitcase under his feet. At least it will take until the evening, and in the future, we will have to find someone who can be trusted to take care of each other, and we must wait until this trip to get off the bus to feel at ease. Kasha disregarded the gaze of those people, many of whom were only wearing clothes that could barely withstand the cold, and it was difficult to find pairs of shoes on their feet. The first thing they do after getting on the car is to pick up shoes that fit their feet, and having them is always better than not having them. Almost exhausted, Kasia finally endured until nightfall, almost half of the day without any water or food. He felt his throat burning with thirst and his stomach aching with hunger. The gas light was dim, and for only half a day, everyone's faces were already tired. A few people have already gone to the container where the food was shipped to buy food. Kasha sat and moved his body for a while. He bent down to pick up his luggage and also went to buy some bread to satisfy his hunger. But in the next moment, his body stiffened, as if carved out of stone. Then he looked up unnaturally and looked around. Some were sleeping, some were staring at the gas lamp in a daze, and some were looking at the occasional stars flashing through the ventilation vent. No one noticed him here. Something was added to his luggage at some point, it was a rough revolver pistol, with a thumb-sized muzzle and a black alloy forged body displaying its immense power. With a buzzing sound in Kasha's head, he suddenly became chaotic, as if instinctively, he didn't know what was going on. When a cold wind completely refreshed him, the pistol was already placed inside his thick clothes. His body, holding his luggage, was a bit light and ethereal, with a feeling of confusion. Every step he took seemed like something was ringing in his mind. The floor of the carriage was also filled with people, and Kasia walked cautiously between them step by step towards the food container. The dim yellow world under the dim light seemed to open a new door to Kasia's world, and people's pale faces seemed to be gradually becoming distorted. So the seventeen-year-old boy slowly walked past several tens of meters long cargo boxes. Under the pale light of the gas lamp and the murmuring prayers of the Holy Emperor around him, a bullet wrapped in a brass shell seemed like a chance encounter of fate, accidentally appearing in the boy's resolute and pure black pupils. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Noel You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Noel This is just a joke. Under the dim light, the exquisite bullet seemed to have been waiting there for a long time, and its exquisite workmanship reflected a dazzling golden radiance for Kasia. Kasia's corner of the eye glanced at it and was attracted by its radiance, unable to accommodate anything else. The footsteps mechanically slowed down, and Kasia put down her luggage, her mind numb and unable to think. There was no fighting inside, as if her thoughts had already been completely unified when he picked up the revolver. He bent down, picked up the bullet, and his thick palm tightly grasped it in his palm. As he walked forward with a heart thumping, he put the bullet into the pocket attached to his body, where he still had all the expenses he had for studying at Mano. The cold bullet came into contact with Kasha's scorching skin, and he unconsciously shuddered. The ventilation in front of me was filled with a cold wind mixed with ice and snow, which was not as cold as bullets. Everyone is doing their own things, and Kasha's appearance is not particularly impressive. The food container was crowded with people, and many hungry people gathered there, eager for someone to donate some food. Purchasing tickets is already the limit of their ability, and perhaps most people can still make it through one or two meals, but what about afterwards? No one can say clearly. Kasha walked out of those cargo boxes under the gaze of countless pairs of evil wolves, and the people standing on either side were slightly restless. A restless mood filled the entire cargo box, and the air became hot in the throat. People's faces looked grim under the gas lamp light. After midnight, everyone's activities came to an end at this moment. Hungry bodies also collapsed in front of exhaustion, and people fell into deep slumber. Outside the train was a cold ice field, with vegetation devoid of any vitality beneath the ice, 
and the interior was lifeless. Kasha finally slept soundly for a while, but as he was highly focused, whenever there was any movement in the carriage, his sleep was extremely shallow and he could immediately wake up. In order to avoid accidents with the limited luggage in my arms, I can only do this. The next day's sunshine was approaching noon, and the ventilation vent was the only connecting passage between the world inside the cargo box and the outside world. The golden sunlight shone in, leaving a bright shadow on the black steel plate. A little warmth also spread into the carriage along with the sunlight. But this warmth cannot solve any problems. There are more and more people in the food box, and it seems that someone has started to grab other people's food, but Kasha has not yet witnessed this with her own eyes. But going to buy food makes the journey even more difficult. The dispatch of train attendants from the Empire to check tickets began around 3 p.m. in the afternoon. The door connecting the cargo box and the passenger compartment has always been tightly locked and can only be opened separately from the passenger compartment. In the afternoon, the people in the cargo box were still sitting quietly in a daze. Then, with the sound of iron chains clattering and steam splashing, the thickened door suddenly opened. Behind them stood six fully armed flight attendants, without any expression or warmth, resembling humanoid machines with no guns, only sharp piercing swords and ferocious iron bars. They started checking from the first section of the cargo box and requested that everyone present the ticket stub of the train ticket. Of course, most people do, and a few people do not. In such a situation, begging for mercy and selling sympathy has no effect. According to their instructions, either the ticket should be paid immediately or the train should be disembarked. Getting off the train is of course a dead end, because double trains never stop and give you the opportunity to get off. Someone started running back one carriage at a time, but it had no effect at all. The third and second floors of the cargo compartment were completely separated, and even if hidden in the surrounding cargo cabinets, it could not escape the carpet-style search of six crew members. Some of them had no choice but to touch the remaining coins, while others wept and begged for mercy, only to be forcibly thrown off the train in everyone's frightened eyes. When the six crew members arrived in the carriage where Keja was located, it was already approaching dusk. All the people who touched the muddy water had already run into the last few cargo boxes in panic, and those who could still sit quietly took out their ticket stubs when the six flight attendants arrived. The flight attendant scanned one by one with cold eyes, his gaze falling on the person couldn't help but make people feel like they were being stared at by wild beasts. The atmosphere inside the entire carriage was undoubtedly extremely cold at this moment, with people's faces pale and struggling to breathe white air, their throats dry but unable to secrete any saliva. Everyone prayed for these six icy people to leave quickly. However, things often go against people's wishes. Whose child is this? This voice has no emotions, no magnetism, and no emotions involved. Apart from being loud and clear, it is just like a machine roaring. Everyone's gaze was drawn to this moment. The flight attendant is tall and his head is about to touch the top of the plane. He held a dark and rough iron rod in his hand, with the other end of the rod lifting up the brim of a girl's hat, revealing her childish face of about six or seven years old, as well as exquisite facial features, stunning and resembling the craftsmanship of a famous family. A head of light golden long hair was very scattered, all hidden inside the clothes. Her hat is the style attached to her clothes and her nearly one meter tall body is completely hidden inside this gray men's coat that completely doesn't match her. Because the brim of the hat was lifted, the clothes were also pulled up to a certain height, and the pale little feet without shoes were completely exposed to the air in the cargo compartment. The girl's eyes were as pitch black as Kasha's sister, the same color as the endless black sky. However, there is no moon, no stars flowing all over the sky, and no glimmer of light in this sky. It is a color of stillness, a color that all things can possess when they are withered. Whose child is this? The steel-like man asked again, his voice unquestionable, and no one could resist. She's just a child, a woman's pleading voice echoed in the dimly lit carriage, faint as smoke that could be blown away by the wind at any moment. Your child. 
this is a cold question. When the gaze passed, it was already the wild beast's gaze towards the prey in hand. No, 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 the woman's back suddenly oozed cold sweat, her breathing became extremely rapid, and her pale face turned pale. She turned her head and dared not even glance over. The weak body can only tremble in the corner and then cry helplessly. Open the door. Everyone in the carriage fell into the ice cellar, but no one was willing to stand up. The other crew members usually take out the password card from their bag and insert it into the card slot next to the carriage. The connection suddenly spewed steam and white mist, and as long as the control lever on the side was pulled down again, the cargo door could be opened. Noel, come over here. In everyone's shining eyes, Kasha stood up stiffly, but a few short words required immense courage and strength. The flight attendant ultimately did not pull down the control stick, and six pairs of eyes emitting a cold breath closely watched as Kasia walked step by step. Kasia felt that these six pairs of eyes were twelve dark, invisible barrels, as if massive steel bullets could burst out at any moment, shattering her weak body into pieces. But until the end, such a bloody thing did not happen. Their gaze was majestic, like a giant looking down at the pitifully small ants beneath their feet, like fierce wolves playing with prey that cannot escape. With every step taken, Kasha bears immense pressure and expends immense physical energy. With every step taken, the regret that grows in her heart surges like a spring of water. I accidentally fell asleep and didn't pay close attention to my sister, Kasia said cautiously. He took out his ticket stub and showed it to the flight attendant, then squatted in front of the girl and went to pick out the pocket of her thin clothes. There was no light in the girl's eyes, staring blankly at a stranger named Kasia in front of her. Noel, where's your ticket? Of course, there is nothing in the pocket which anyone can see. It seems like the ticket stubs have fallen off. Look at my ticket stubs, Noel's ticket, Kasia dared to swear that her mind had never been so dull, never so painfully passed. Although he didn't give up any hope early in the morning, when the fact that the girl didn't have a ticket stub in her pocket was truly revealed to him, he still felt the coolness emanating from his heart. 100 pounds, 2,200 holy coins. The heartless words made Kasia tremble all over her body, and the only warmth left in her hands and feet was gone, with only a heart pounding and struggling to beat. A girl of six or seven years old couldn't have such a weight, but the weight in the words coming from behind was not something Kasia could resist. He wanted to defend himself, but the courage that surged to his throat was ultimately contained. The coin in his hand still held Kasia's own temperature, but was taken away by a hard palm wearing white gloves, and the remaining temperature on it eventually disappeared. The leather shoes of six cabin crew members bounced and clattered on the steel plate, until the sound was drowned in the howling wind of the ventilation duct. Kasia still had no strength to stand up. He regretted it in his heart, was afraid in his heart, wanted to cry loudly in his heart, wanted to vent it loudly in his heart, had a gentle temperament like a kitten that loves to bask in the sun at noon, and couldn't bear to see moths desperately rushing towards the lights and crashing into the glass window, which would also make him sad. He thought he was a weak and incompetent coward in his heart, so he had to show perseverance and resilience in his words and actions to disguise himself. Squat there for a long time until both legs numb and then lose consciousness. At some point, a terrifying scream came from the carriage behind, and all those attempting to resist were thrown off the train. No one is willing to get up tonight to light the gas lamp, only the bright moonlight from the ventilation opening illuminates the cargo compartment. Kasia could only sigh in the end, mixed with various emotions and feelings, her chest was extremely dull, but the regret and heaviness in her heart could not dissipate much. Until dawn the next day, Kasia couldn't close her eyes. Under his feet were his precious luggage, but in his arms lay a girl with abnormal weight. The girl put on Kasia's thick spare clothes, and her small feet, which were floating in the air, also put on makeshift rough shoes. At this moment, she was sleeping soundly in the arms of a stranger to her. The girl slept too soundly, her eyes tightly closed, and there was no sign of wanting to open them by noon. 
Her long eyelashes seemed to hang under her eyelids, swaying slightly as she murmured in her sleep. Her breathing was long and heavy, like a black whale that could tear apart ocean currents in the deep sea. Every breath exhausted all her strength. Kasha carefully looked at the quiet face of the girl sleeping, and then remembered her sister who was already far away on the border. It's still cold winter now, and Lilia is also tightly wrapped in a blanket, sleeping in a ball by the fireplace, unwilling to get up yet. When early spring approaches, Lilia will also start attending schools in the small town. At this moment, the sleeping girl in her arms moved, and the light in Kasha's eyes returned to the cargo compartment. The woman finally opened her eyes, and the pitch black sky now finally had a hint of brilliance. What's your name? Kasha's voice was incredibly gentle, perhaps just thinking of her sister. Her tone was quiet and gentle, although it didn't have any addictive magnetism. Noel. A shallow voice came from the girl's mouth, with a vague feeling of not being fully asleep. She changed to a more comfortable sleeping position and closed her eyes again. Kasha opened her mouth, her eyes flickering for a moment, lost for a moment, and then became incredibly clear. She wanted to ask something more, but as she watched the girl fall asleep again, she couldn't spit out any more words. So in the afternoon, Kasia walked towards the thin figure in the food compartment, where another girl appeared. He held the luggage in one hand and the girl in the other, slowly walking in the increasingly crowded first few compartments. The air is filled with a sense of restlessness, just a small spark can ignite all the combustibles. Some people are even more cautious, and the hungry wolves no longer have a fierce light in their eyes, but an endless greed. There is no sign of the train stopping at the platform, and all emotions and emotions continue to ferment in the dim cargo compartment. Kasha returned with an unpleasant expression, and the girl Noel sat next to him, nibbling on the bread with warm water. He naturally leaned against the cargo wooden board behind him, and the suitcase was full of food for the next few days. He didn't want to go to those carriages anymore, and the people guarding there looked at him as if they were deciding on a prey. So the boy wanted to close his eyes and rest for a while, but his mind was filled with the twisted faces of those hungry and cold people. So in the darkness of the corner of the cargo compartment, a slight metal collision sound that no one had noticed came to mind. Kasha trembled and put the brass shell bullet into the honeycomb magazine of the revolver. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Breathing Out You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Breathing Out, What's Your Name? Another day passed, and today was Kasia's 24th day on the Empire Reign. He looked at the little girl sitting next to him and asked again. The girl sat very straight and upright, with her back straight. She refused to put down her hat, and under the brim was a dimly lit area. In the darkness, her black eyes became even more vibrant. Noel. The girl's answer was brief, repeating these two words forever. What about your mother or father? Are they in the car? Kasia still held a glimmer of hope in his heart, regretting what he had done with empathy. Going to Manoma by oneself is to go to school, to seek opportunities to earn titles and money. He doesn't have much money on him, and he can still barely provide food and other things for the little girl. But if he really arrives in Manoma, how should the little girl be placed? Going to Imperial Heavy Industries on my own, but I can only live in cheap campus dormitories, which are a few people per room. If the little girl follows her, not only is accommodation a problem, but various expenses in life are also a problem. Kasia felt her head suddenly swell up, and she felt a painful pain from worry. Do you also want to abandon Noel? The girl's feeling was as sharp as a beast and as sensitive as a hunter. She felt the troubles entwined around Kasia and the remorse that had affected her. Kasia's pupils tightened and her mouth slightly opened, expressing not only surprise but also something she couldn't say. How could a kitten that loves to bask in the sun be a fierce tiger that decisively kills its prey? He thought of his sister Lilia again, as if his tenderness was about to overflow. His clenched fist slowly loosened, and the hesitation in his eyes finally dissipated. At this moment, 
he made a decision. How could it be, believe me? Kasia tried to give the girl Noel a mature, steady, and confident smile, but in Noel's eyes, it was just a face that was even uglier than crying. Noel believes in you. The girl's words warmed Kasia's heart after a few cold days. He gently rubbed Noel's head and began to calculate various plans when he arrived at Manoma in his mind. Children who are capable of assembling mechanical watches like perpetual calendars not only require excellent eyesight, but also patience and attention to detail are crucial. The installation sequence and steps of each gear require meticulous thinking to memorize and adjust. Kasha is very skilled in this area. Once she makes a decision, even if she still regrets it in her heart, she has already begun to consider various situations in her mind, although this kind of thinking is still very immature. There was nothing to do all day, and Noel was sleeping all day. He looked very tired and had limited time to talk to Kasha. Kasha took out the theological history books from her suitcase when there was plenty of light to read. There are several pages with serious flipping marks on them, which read, in the year zero of the Gregorian calendar, the Astis family took control of the kingdom of Mano. After the first generation of analytical machine cores were transported by train to Manoma, the kingdom of Mano was renamed the St. Dorag Empire. With the unparalleled computing power of analytical machines, the industrial foundation and technological innovation of the St. Dorag Empire have made tremendous progress. The birth of the analysis machine made the St. Dorag Empire another emerging hegemon on the later continent in just over a decade, leading to the outbreak of the War of Creation. Dozens of neighboring countries were all spared under the steel war machine of the St. Dorag Empire. The War of Creation was quelled, and the empire had been replenishing its strength for hundreds of years. Ambition once again bloated, and the war broke out once again. Countless small countries without support were destroyed, and the flag of the empire seemed to be about to occupy the entire hinterland. The rolling wheels of progress were blocked by the western Far Sea Common Kingdom, and even stopped at the border of the Flame Alliance in the south. The supposed war of destruction and decay has turned into a cross-century tug of war. The hope for a cessation of war has exhausted the lives of several generations, but this century-long tug of war has continued to this day without any signs of cessation Kasha looked at the densely packed small characters on the book, and the dim environment made her eyes sour quickly. The quiet environment around her became a good catalyst. He felt his eyelids heavy, and the words on the book began to blur. Although I tried my best to cheer myself up, I was really nervous and didn't pay much attention to my sleep during the past two days due to Noel's incident. Not long ago, I finally made a decision on Noel's matter. The tense nerves on my body relaxed and exhaustion enveloped me like night. Kasha closed her eyes and the book fell on Noel. Both of them fell asleep quietly. Kasha felt as if she had closed her eyes, slept deeply and deeply, with a blank mind and no thought, just a simple and quick rest of her brain. It wasn't until he subconsciously felt someone dragging his legs that his consciousness suddenly returned. He was covered in a fine layer of cold sweat all over his body, his eyes suddenly opened, and his left hand, still holding the book, was placed on Noel's weak body, while his right hand instinctively touched the high alloy short sword behind him. No. Kasha's heart seemed to have been pinched hard by someone, and in an instant, his heart pounded and made it difficult for him to breathe. In a short period of time, the hazy sleeping eyes had adapted to the dim environment, and the first scene that came into his pupils was the greedily looking around him with more than a dozen pale and twisted faces. The second picture shows two people half kneeling under their feet, pulling hard on the suitcase fixed under their knee sockets. Because Kasha didn't find anyone to take care of each other, but instead tied one end of the thick rope on her luggage to her own feet during rest. The suitcase made of hard leather has several sharp scratches on it, but fortunately the leather quality is good and has not been scratched. And the two half-kneeling people were struggling to pull the seal of the suitcase tied with a thick rope outward. One of them was holding a short sword, which was the one Kasia had lost. In the blink of an eye, the thick rope has already been cut. 
and Keisha's clear eyes were also discovered by the dozen or so people surrounding her. Wake up! Wake up! This startled cry was hoarse like an old hen shedding its fur. At this moment, the air suddenly froze and then erupted like ignited gunpowder, restless and explosive. What are you doing? Keja was frightened in his heart, and this sentence was almost shouted out with all his strength. He was afraid in his heart. He had heard early on that people were looting someone else's belongings, and there were also people who would steal someone else's luggage while they were asleep. Although I knew in my heart that such a thing had happened, when it happened to me, the feeling of fear and helplessness was stronger than ever before. How can a thief do without the courage of a thief? Moreover, the target of their theft and robbery was only a seventeen-year-old boy. Moreover, they had not eaten anything for several days, and their survival instinct led them to find Kasia, a child who felt harmless to humans and animals. The roaring voice did not have the deterrent effect that Seija wanted, but rather the act of theft was discovered, and the theft immediately turned into a blatant robbery. They were originally a group of greedy robbers. The suitcase was suddenly pulled apart by two people, with no weight at all. It was suddenly pulled up by tremendous force, and the cut thick rope could no longer be used for tying. Everything inside the suitcase collapsed. Thick books, spare sets of clothes, including a black dress made for him by his mother to stay up late for formal occasions, two pairs of shoes, pencils, and pens scattered all over the ground. The black ink bottle was incredibly fragile, with a crisp cracking sound, and a black flower was dyed on the steel plate. Several fragrant pieces of bread wrapped in earthy yellow oil paper also rolled onto the ground. Finally, there is a golden admission letter and a simple graffiti floating in the air with the words, Brother Kasia, slowly falling to the ground. Mine. Mine. It's all mine. The aroma of the food and the cold wind instantly dispersed the small group that had been gathered together, and more than a dozen people crowded together to frantically compete. Kasia placed Noel, who had already woken up, on the wooden board of the cargo box behind her, and her strong body squeezed into the crowd with tremendous force, pushing away these crazy-looking robbers. Get lost! Kasha almost lifted the woman in front of him with a palm, his mind in chaos, unable to think about anything. He just suddenly felt a piercing sensation in his neck, woke up, but had already seen a flash of cold light in the dim environment, and a short sword with a snowy blade quickly retracted. Then the piercing sensation in the area where the left lower jaw was connected to the earlobe turned into a piercing pain. The feeling of being cut by a short sword was incredibly strong, and scorching liquid flowed out of the wound, soaking the entire left neck. Kasia instinctively touched with her left hand, her eyes reflecting bright red blood stains on her hands. He inexplicably panicked, and a cold sweat broke out on his forehead. Cold air that could penetrate his bones could also be heard from all over his body. Ignoring the pain, he quickly covered the wound with his hand to prevent more blood from flowing out. Just like this, covering her wound and looking at the crowd still rushing in front of her, Keja no longer had the courage to take another step. He stood in front of them in a daze, trembling with fear, his robust body devoid of any strength at this moment. Kasha watched as all her clothes and shoes were taken away, and the bread lying on the ground was snatched away from the pale faces of those people with a joyful expression. Only books and pens, no one asks. The wound covered by my left hand was already bleeding, but fortunately it was just a skin injury and did not damage any nerve tissue. Kasha originally thought that these bandits would leave like this, but when everything scattered on the ground had already been forced to decide the owner, they stood there with even more confidence, led by the man with a short sword. Kasha stood in front of them like a docile lamb waiting to be slaughtered, unable to resist. Money, we want money, your money. Give us your money. The hoarse voice was filled with the joy of victory and an indescribable pride, as well as an overflowing impatience. Give up the money quickly. You have money to buy this little girl, why don't you save us? Bread is a million times cheaper than a girl. I'm so hungry, I want money. There were twisted voices in the crowd. 
She was originally my sister, Keja's lips turned white and she trembled. This sentence was uttered word by word, trembling and trembling. The leading man seemed to be losing patience, and the success of the first step made his pride soar. Don't lie to us. You don't look like her at all. Her hair is golden, and your hair is black. You weren't even by her side a few days ago. Give us money quickly, touch it out. Come on. We want money. Hurry up. Take out the money. Take out the money and we'll let you go. Yes, I'll let you go with the money. Quick. Money. Money. All the money. Suddenly, someone couldn't bear it anymore and came up to tug at Keja's clothes. A few others bypassed him and reached out their stained hands to grab Noel, who was quietly hiding behind Keja with his eyes wide open. Kasia felt the strength of Noel's hands tightly gripping the corners of his clothes, and he didn't know where the courage and strength came from. He swung his fists and pushed away all the people who were rushing towards him. The coagulated wound tore open again, and blood flowed out again. At the steam factory, he also started with the lowest level of labor, moving steel parts every day, and his strength was also forcibly honed at that time. Even if they are still underage, their strength is much greater than that of an ordinary adult male. The dozen or so people in front of them suddenly became excited and angry, as if they were looking at their gentle child and suddenly dared to jump up and hit their knees. They pushed and pushed, using their hands to grab the resolute and pale face of the young man. Kasia swung her tightly clenched fist and rushed forward. At the corner of her eye, she saw the leading man wielding a sharp short sword and slashing towards his chest. Kasia quickly took a step back to avoid the sword, but it also caused a big cut in her chest clothes, revealing pure white cotton inside. Even if it is not cut, it still gives the skin there a feeling of being frozen by the cold ice. He wants to kill me. The cool air that dissipated throughout the young man's body suddenly disappeared. Get lost. Get lost. Get lost. The seventeen-year-old boy could no longer contain his fear in his heart, and then it instantly turned into speechless anger. At this moment, all the fear, all the weakness, all the forbearance, and all the acquiescence turned into a burning agent of anger. He seemed to be spewing hot air, like a thoroughly enraged little cat with explosive fur, revealing sharp claws hidden under delicate fur. He took out the revolver from his arms, with a black barrel, a barrel that was over ten centimeters long, and a caliber that was the thickness of his thumb. There is a spiral called the death spiral, in the dark muzzle of the gun, and deep inside the barrel, there seems to be a black dragon covered in scales and armor extending its majestic and ferocious head, breathing out bright red and hot flames. At this moment, the air becomes sticky and then freezes. The group of people in front of them had a frozen expression, their twisted faces filled with fear looking towards the muzzle of the gun. Their aura dissipated in an instant, without a trace. Their confidence dissipated in an instant, their bodies became weak again, their pride turned into fear, and their joy turned into a terrifying nightmare that they couldn't shake off. The words of the leading man, you dare to open, were a declaration of his death, and his proud face was shattered into flying fragments by a ten-caliber revolver. Black Dragon exhaled without any hesitation. He didn't want to see any more smug expressions, nor did he want to hear any more syllables of dying crows howling. The bright red flames illuminated the dimly lit carriage like lightning, illuminating the faces of others who were gasping for breath and trembling with fear. They also sounded like thunderbolts announcing the arrival of a black storm. The golden bullet blasted open a person's head, but still with immense power, it shot fiercely onto the steam pipe in the corner of the cargo compartment, emitting a clear sound of golden iron criticism. The body oozed blood and collapsed weakly, with a strong steam gushing out from the metal pipes, moistening the dry air of the entire carriage. The young man's eyes were bloodshot, his tightly bitten lips were oozing blood, his fingers holding the trigger in his right hand were still exerting tremendous force, and the smoke rising from the revolver had not completely dissipated. The air quickly diluted the smell of gunpowder. 
The remaining people had already crawled out of this oppressive cage, escaping from the young man who suddenly transformed from a kitten to a bad wolf in front of them. The young man gritted his teeth, not letting any emotions suddenly disappear from his heart, to moisten the corners of his eyes. He walked forward step by step with determination, bending down to pick up books that he cherished, pencils and pens that he cherished, precious graffiti given to him by his sister, and golden admission letters stained red with blood from his chin. Kasha sat quietly beside Noel, his tall figure blocking the view of the fallen body. He set his pistol aside and covered the reopened wound with his left hand, but didn't dare to take a look at Noel. He doesn't know what his figure will look like in the eyes of a girl, but he can imagine it must be very bad. Normally, my younger sister Lilia would be scared and cry at the sight of even a little blood, making such a scene unfold in front of a six or seven year old girl. What an incompetent brother! Kasha sighed in her heart, but there was also an inexplicable emotion palpitating. He stared at the continuous gushing milky white steam in a daze, not noticing Noel's calm face from beginning to end, and the radiance in her eyes was even greater than before. The people in the tidy carriage had already left, hiding far away, so quiet that the two could hear each other's steady or rapid breathing. When the unique bouncing sound of a shoe stepping on a steel plate came, this tranquility was broken. Seven or eight men wearing grey work uniforms or black management uniforms walked into the connecting port of the carriage, with the leading men wearing smiling faces. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Terminal Station You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Terminal Station Kasha never turned her head from beginning to end, just stared at the gushing steam plume. Fortunately, it's not a special type of high-dot-pressure steam pipeline, otherwise the massive amount of hot steam spewing out would definitely cause a lot of trouble for the two of them who are nearby. This is what Kasia has been thinking in his mind, and other things and scenes have been subconsciously blocked by him. Several pairs of shiny black leather boots stepped into his sight, and only then did he lift his head. On his pale and determined face, his eyes remained incredibly clear, as if nothing could desecrate pollution. Hello, respected Mr. Murderer. I am the junior manager of the Empire's heavy ranking 237, and you can call me Mr. Varoka. Of course, you can also call me Varoka Manager. The leading man wore a smile that seemed to be innate, a smile that never tires of seeing, giving people a touch of warmth and affection, without any signs of artificiality, it was just natural. Just squinting slightly, the eyes under the long eyelashes seemed to have countless rays of light circulating. Kasha, the young man replied politely, at least they didn't immediately point their bright pistols at their heads, which were slung around their waist. Sigh, continued Kasia's words, and then let out a heavy sigh. He looked at the bright red blood still pulsating on the ground, as well as the corpses that occasionally twitched, and lightly rubbed his gloved palm. He slowly turned his head and looked around at all the scenery around him, making all the scenes in the dim environment reflect in his mind. When I saw the admission letter with golden lettering next to Kasia, my eyes lit up even more, but I didn't move a word. No one could tell anything from his smiling face. Respected murderer and destroyer, Mr. Kasia, who is also a worker in the future imperial heavy industry machinery industry, can I analyze your current situation for you? Varoka's voice was gentle, and the others stood quietly behind him. Seeing that Kasha had only been looking at him, Valorka continued to say. According to the imperial regulations, murderers must pay for their lives. If the regulations are repeated and steam pipelines are damaged, even in severe cases, they must pay for their lives. Of course, as someone who can be admitted to the Imperial Heavy Industry School, everyone is very clear about the binding force of these regulations. Therefore, the sound of gunfire did not spread far, and we only came here because we received an alarm that the steam pipelines were damaged. Although exercise can warm our bodies in such cold weather, I still prefer to sit in a room with heating, listen to music, and have some afternoon tea. Voloka rubbed his slightly cold hand again. I don't know if Mr. Kasha also feels the same way. 100 pounds, 2,200 holy coins. 
Kasha felt that her voice must have had a crying tone, as things shouldn't have developed like this. Of course, such a thin bone weighs only about 100 pounds. But you see, cleaning it up is also very difficult. My subordinates are best at this job, 2,000 holy coins, how about it? Valoka calculated, like a merchant introducing goods. Of course, there is also the maintenance cost of the steam pipeline, which is very troublesome. Valorka's tone was filled with the distress of dealing with troublesome matters. I can repair the steam pipes myself, and I only need the tools you have in hand. I can lend them money. Kasia knew he couldn't escape the smiling fox in front of him, and he longed even more to deal with those rude or cold-smelling flight attendants. Because their temperament is like a naked girl, as long as you light up, you can see any inch of the skin of the girl you are interested in. So there will definitely be people wearing thick clothes with layers of bandages on their faces, and you never know what kind of faces are hidden under those fabrics. No, no, Mr. Kasha. Val Lorca shook her head, repairing the steam pipeline is the simplest thing. The trouble is that I am just a small train manager. When I go back, the authorities will definitely inquire about the reason for the damage to the pipeline. Valoka revealed his distress and said, why don't you think so? If a starving refugee thug came up with a pistol from somewhere and threatened to steal someone else's money with a gun. But with a tremble in his hand, he punched a hole in the steam pipe. Then the brave Valoka manager arrived and fired six silver bullets in a row, not only destroying his pistol but also the thug's head. Then the matter came to an end, and the curtain fell. Did what you saw happen like this, respected Mr. Kasia. Carlo asked softly, continuing his mind on the musical. The props of the stage play are carefully prepared, and you should know that each bullet is a delicate ammunition worth a hundred holy coins. And to avoid being blamed by your superiors for this accident, you need to let the characters above calm down and watch this stage play. They must not be interested in not preparing a full dot flavored wine to boost their mood. But that's a good product worth 5,000 holy coins, and I can only take a sip at the New Year's ceremony. It's really difficult to handle these things. Voloka said, pulling out his pistol. The silver body of the gun shone brightly, indicating that it was a carefully maintained high dot end item. He set aside the wheel and poured out six equally exquisite silver bullets inside. The weight of the six bullets was surprisingly heavy, heavy, and cold, as if the metal in hand was not bullets, but cold ice that could condense the flesh and blood of the palm. But even if it is impeccably exquisite, it is only a mass dot produced product worth one holy coin, just plated with an extra layer of silver metal. It's really disgusting. Kasha took out the money with cold eyes, like a wolf trying to lay it on and bite the prey that provoked him, but this time he was powerless. There was still his own body temperature remaining on the coin, and he was also taken away by the white-gloved palm. The temperature on it disappeared, and this time he received six silver bullets in the palm without any temperature. The steam pipeline has been repaired, and the people who came are several skilled veterans. The cargo door was opened, and a fierce cold wind poured in from there. The body was thrown down, and outside the carriage was a dead farmland filled with white snow. Aren't you afraid that I'll shoot six cold shots from behind? Kasha put the silver bullets into the honeycomb drum one by one, and then exerted her thumb to perfectly reset the drum. The rough black pistol once again transformed into a black dragon capable of spewing flames. Mr. Kasha, the world of the Empire is not as miserable as you see it now. It will become even more turbid. You still have aspirations and hopes for the Empire in your heart, and I don't think you will give up this opportunity to see the true face of the Empire. Well, respected Mr. Kasia, congratulations on a pleasant journey with your sister. Val Lorca smiled and made a standard etiquette to Kasia, which was the elegance of a rogue thief. Then, he turned around and stepped on the bouncing sound, disappearing into the continuous darkness of the cargo compartment. The black ink and blood on the ground formed a layer of ice, and no one dared to come to this carriage again. Even when passing through here, people turned their heads and quickened their steps to run by. In their eyes, 
Kasha was an absolute demon, especially one that could take the life of any of them at any time. Kasha's heart was desolate, and things shouldn't have developed like this. The normal order should not be to safely ride on the imperial train and arrive at Manoma without any issues, with a slight chill. Then, holding the admission letter, paying expensive tuition fees, holding his head high, smoothly enrolled, lived in cheap campus dormitories, made many friends, graduated smoothly five years later, was awarded the title of baron, found a job that met his status, and allowed his mother and sister to live a good life. Isn't this how his life trajectory should be? But why, why only in a few twenty days, everything has changed? Why would someone pay attention to me, a gentle person like me and someone with such a good personality? Is it something I did wrong? I just want to work hard and be good at myself. He turned his head, and it was the first time he had looked into Noel's eyes. There was no fear in them, only a overflowing attachment and endless depth. I'm still very gentle, Kasia said sorrowfully as he shook the cold pistol in his hand. Believe me, this is just a toy. Although he can kill. This is what Kasia didn't say in her mouth. Night falls, dawn comes again. The next day, the Empire Express finally stopped at the second-to-last station, and a group of people cried as they ran off the train. Here, they could welcome a new life, start a new one, and escape from hell. There are also more people getting on the car, full of hope and youthful ambition. As they prepare to showcase their skills in Manoma, there will always be the vast majority of people silently returning with their tails between their legs. The train takes a day to load and unload necessary goods, and the cargo compartment rarely stays open until late at night. This place is still far from Manoma, but it cannot be considered a border area. It is a relatively rich industrial site. The popularization of electrical appliances has spread here, and the shadow of gas lamps has long disappeared from the platforms. Instead, they have been replaced by brighter and more fog-piercing mercury vapor lamps. The incandescent light is like scorching sun, illuminating the entire busy station. Kasha can finally see the entire starry sky flowing, and winter is slowly fading away. He really wanted to get off the car, but his situation seemed to have spread, so that in such a new place, everyone still avoided him and Noel. People who get on the train dare not take a step over his carriage. Since everyone is avoiding him, it must be right for me to follow along. That's a ridiculous reason. Kasha wanted to make fun of these people who were completely unaware of the entire incident with a sarcastic tone, but as a clown-like character, he remained the same from beginning to end. He held the gas lamp by his side and, without drowsiness, accompanied the books, even though most of them were already recorded in his mind. Noel was sleeping soundly under her hat, and the girl had an unknown fatigue. In the middle of the night, the repeated whistle sounded again, like a mournful cry, carrying a group of people who were treated as goods to the busiest part of the St. Dorag Empire, which was their dream paradise but also their real hell. Three days later, on the morning of February 12, 1096 in the Gregorian calendar, the cold winter began to recede, but warm spring was delayed in coming. The Empire Express slowly docked at the train station north of Noma. There was a noisy sound outside, and the cargo compartment slowly opened one by one under the cover of steam. The administrator blew a loud steel whistle and urged the people on the cargo compartment to leave quickly. Kasha was awakened by the sound, her eyes opened, and the sour and painful pain was severe. The girl's delicate body was no longer in her arms. Noel is missing. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Arrival you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8 Arrival Kasha was kicked down by the administrator holding several thick books. He searched all the way from the first cargo compartment to the last one, but there was no sign of Noel in each compartment. He stood in front of the heavy train in a daze, surrounded by a crowded crowd. People who came from all over the empire to Manoma were staring at the magnificent steel forest city in front of him in a daze and admiration. The nobles and wealthy merchants had already left in various gift cars. 
Everyone came to Manoma with happy and awe-inspiring smiles, as well as full of ambition. Only Kasha felt as if someone had cut off a piece with a sharp knife, full of a feeling of loss. He felt like a kitten abandoned by its owner, standing in a dark and stormy night without lights, only lightning and thunder could briefly illuminate the scenery hidden in the darkness around him. He was cold and hungry, with tears streaming down his heart. The full-barrel pistol in his arms, which already had its own warmth, couldn't bring him any sense of security. His forehead continued to sweat, which was due to his palpitations. Hello, may I ask if you have seen such a girl before? She is. Mr. Administrator, may I ask if you have seen a single girl? Sir, have you seen a lonely girl with light golden hair sitting here? That's it. The time lasted until the afternoon, and the empire rain slowly drove away, but there was still no news about the little girl. Everyone just held their hands and breathed hot air, then shook their heads with a puzzled expression. No. No. It seemed like I was back when I asked for Noel's name. What's your name? Noel, repeated the answer. At that time, I was also so impatient. But as soon as she thought of the girl's clear black eyes, which were full of attachment, Keja only felt the softness of the big cat taking care of the little cat in her heart. The sun has not yet appeared today, so it will slowly set again. It's not that Noel left, but that he was abandoned. I don't know when this idea suddenly came to his mind. He felt even more uncomfortable inside, with inexplicable emotions surging and fermenting. The order of one's life seems to have been reversed by someone. Hey, brother, if you don't leave, it'll be too late. Someone next to me said. Kasha looked over and saw that the speaker was still very young, with a face that had been tanned black, white teeth, and a dry and thin appearance. He had a nice smile on his face. Are you going to Imperial Heavy Industry School? I noticed you when I came here this morning to recruit people. Your appearance is also very eye-dot-catching. After taking a few more glances at you, I saw your notice. If you don't leave, you won't be able to make it to the registration time. These schools in Manoma don't accept late students, and it's getting dark. Just now, I have to return to the west of Manoma. How about a discount of 50 holy coins for you this time? Seeing Kasha looking dazed and not responding, the person continued, Brother, I don't think you're a noble businessman. I knew you were a commoner long ago. How about 40? Get on the car quickly, and start from your seat. My car is as fast as the wind, safe and guaranteed, and will never capsize. I'll take you directly to the gate of the Imperial Heavy Industry School. I've pulled many people like you every year, and they've all agreed. Come. Come. I'll help you carry your luggage. The coachman was enthusiastic, and Keja felt so uncomfortable that she wanted to cry. However, considering her ultimate goal of coming to Manoma, Noel's matter was still deeply buried in her heart at this moment. This is a rudimentary steam locomotive, without a hood, soft seats or even a body frame. It only has a simple mobile frame, welded with a thick layer of steel plate, on which is the rudimentary seat made of wooden boards and iron nails. Don't mind, little brother. Although the car is ugly, the job is good. You can ask the old drivers in this area what quality problems my lemmer's car has. Not only is the car good, but the service is also the most thoughtful. Lemmer looked around and said, Don't look at those beautiful gift cars that say, Respected gentlemen and ladies all at once. In fact, as long as you're not a big aristocrat, you might be cursing in your heart. I've seen them before, they curse people just like us. Lemmer patted his chest, then opened various steam valve switches on the driver's seat, of course, if that could be called the driver's seat. Then the rear of the car steadily emitted thick steam, and four rubber wheels rolled and ran onto a flat road paved with steel and rock cement, heading towards the steel jungle outside the station. In the VIP room of the station, this is a room where you can see the entire station and the flow of people. 
At this moment, the girl is standing quietly on the fragrant wood table used to make up for her height deficiency, watching the platform with the surging flow of people. Behind her stood a quiet row of people, wearing a black top hat and a high-necked black trench coat. The collar was raised to the bottom of her earlobes, and her entire face was cleverly hidden under the dim light. Under the windbreaker, there was an extremely simple and plain attire, wearing light white gloves. The black boots were intentionally blunted to the point where they did not reflect any strong light. The door was silently opened, and two people in the same attire walked in without any human breath or warmth. Even walking on the installed oak floor, they couldn't make any normal human footsteps. Captain Eleanor, the matter regarding the announcement from Val Lorca and the school has been resolved. The two stood respectfully behind the girl, holding several bulging black thick plastic bags in their hands. Do you need to take a look, Captain? No need, throw it into the furnace. The girl still looked at the crowd passing by in front of the station, calmly counting, unable to express a sense of fatigue. Her eyes were filled with stars and the night sky had already regained its vitality. In the night sky, the steam locomotive left the station and was engulfed by the towering steel jungle. Go back, I don't want to be a tool anymore. I want to ban the current head of the Kalandi family, my father Tavalist Kalandi, and also reorganize the members of the family council. There are still many things to do, and you will be very busy in the future. The girl's voice was full of air, and she was wearing those rough and modified shoes, lightly jumping off the table. Behind him, a pile of war weapons shrouded in a black windbreaker also silently disappeared into the bustling city. Manoma is a steel rose created by bolts and rivets, and also a huge forest with marble-pointed domes. Under the talent and imagination of countless top designers and artists, combined with the agile hands of architects and the unparalleled power of steam, the two are like twin babies in perfect harmony, complementing each other. The magnificent buildings that need to be lifted up deeply to see the top usher in the night ahead of schedule in the city. High-pressure mercury lamps flicker slowly along the roadside, and the colorful neon lights and countless small light bulbs adorn the advertising signs, emitting seductive and captivating colors. She is like a woman wearing gorgeous dance makeup. The things used to prop up the storefront and attract customers have indeed cost a lot of money. Of course, although the popularity of Manoma Electric has reached 100%, pipes for transporting steam can still be seen in rooms with open windows. Kasha is the first time I have seen such a city. In the small town at the foot of Mount Larak, the most magnificent building may only be the Great Cathedral, which is only visited every new year. It is made of snow.white marble. But in this area surrounded by buildings and forests, it can only be considered ordinary. Kasha looked up at the new world she was about to enter and live in, and her sense of loss somewhat eased. Lemmer saw that Kasia's mood had improved slightly, and his eyes were rapidly reflecting various lights. He also adjusted the valve and slowed down the speed of the steam locomotive. Don't be surprised, brother. This is still the outermost level. There is also a transitional urban building inside, and the innermost level is the core of the Manoma. If you have time in the future, you can go and see it alone. However, there are some problems with my car, so I can't drive it in. Otherwise, I won't charge you, and I'll have to take you for a good stroll inside. My driving skills are really amazing. Lemmer held the simple steering wheel welded out of an iron pipe, with a great momentum to rush into the steel building. Yes, it's a natural thing, Kasia looked up as the scenery on both sides of the street flowed rapidly backwards. By the time we arrived at the Imperial Heavy Industry School, the sky had completely darkened. Various vehicles were parked in front of the school gate, with nobles, merchants, soldiers, and ordinary civilians all mixed together. Some people come here with the company of their parents, but there are also many like Kasia who carry luggage alone. The people rushing to apply for admission now are also crowded with the huge square in front of the campus. Under the high dot intensity lights, there are crowds of people moving around. Brother, here we are. Congratulations in advance on your smooth future life. 
Lemmer pointed to a huge square next to him and pointed it out to Keja. Thank you. The young man silently got out of the car holding a book, and beside him, there was a mixed sound of a rhapsody like horn and steam gushing. Kasha's luggage was already gone, leaving only a few pens in her pocket and a stack of books in her arms. Along the way, the money that should have been used to pay expensive tuition fees was also scammed clean by the robber like manager on the train. I gave Lemmer forty holy coins for the fare, and the remaining money was only enough for the bread and meals for the next few days. Where should I go? Kasha held the book to her chest, covering the opening that had been cut open with a short sword, revealing the white cotton. She stood in the huge square of the school, ferrying along with the crowd, like a white mist stretching for thousands of miles, unsure where she belonged. Can I owe the tuition fee for now? Although I am a commoner. Kasha held hope in her heart that schools should not be products controlled by nobles. He followed a long queue, feeling frustrated as he watched young children dressed in gorgeous clothes move into school with smiling faces, and watched a few commoners, even if they successfully enrolled, unable to smooth out the black face of a 10,000 yuan tuition fee per academic year. There are always people who are sad and others who are happy. But these emotions do depend on one's identity. There were fewer and fewer people in front of him, and Keja's nervousness grew stronger. The students registered in front of them may be second and third grade students in the school, all very young. Behind them stood soldiers with upright bodies, holding continuous fire guns. The gun body was covered with fine light silver rivets, and the entire length was almost one meter. But fortunately, lightweight metals such as meteorite copper were discovered. Otherwise, such a weapon with each bullet piercing through a 5mm steel plate within its effective range would not have been mass-produced as a single soldier weapon with the improvement of technology. Behind them were alloy boxes used to hold coins, neatly stacked with a stack of coins bearing the heads of the first holy emperor and king of the Santarag Empire, all worth a thousand gold coins. More people choose to use bank cards issued by the Imperial Gold Bank, utilizing the powerful computing and storage capabilities of analytical machines and wireless communication capabilities, everything will become incredibly easy. Of course, obtaining a bank card from the Golden Bank is a waste without a certain amount of financial resources and identity. After all, the wealth and resources of the empire have always been in the hands of a few nobles and merchants, and the common people are always cheap machines. Their numbers are like endless locusts that cannot be killed every year, and the production of bank cards is also a delicate task, and mass production is not a worthwhile purchase. Kasha handed over her admission letter with a tumultuous mood. The person in front of her was a capable young man with a steam engine shaped medal from the Imperial Heavy Industry School on his chest. He warmly welcomed every person who entered the school, regardless of their status. Kasha Tussos the young man in front of him questioned softly. Yes, that's right. Actually, I wanted to ask about tuition fees. Keja's mouth suddenly became blurry, but before she could finish speaking, she was interrupted. Ah, hello Kasha. Mr. Tussos, there are some issues with your admission letter. Please come with me for specific details, and there will be professionals to answer them for you. After all, this is not something I can intervene in. The man stood up, and his originally short body was equivalent to Kasha, with muscles that could not be covered even by a thick cotton coat. Undoubtedly a heavy worker, it seems that moving things is a daily routine. Kasha couldn't help but sigh in his heart, thinking of the robust body he had unconsciously developed. Mr. Tussos, please walk this way. The man cast an apologetic look at the people still lined up behind Keja, and then led Keja to a room that looked like a VIP room, telling him to wait for a moment, and there were no more people coming. Kasha is not sure what happened, and her lack of tuition fees should not be known to anyone. And it's also impossible to make a big fuss over this matter. He looked around and found that the room was large with an oak table in the middle. He placed his books on it and finally freed his tired arms. Is it because of something on the train? Feeling the pistol hidden under her clothes, 
Keja seemed to realize the seriousness of the situation for the first time. The imperial regulations stipulate that civilians are not allowed to hold firearms, let alone kill themselves with a revolver. If that's the case, then we can't stay here anymore. Upon careful consideration, Kasha herself was trapped in a dead end by the wild thoughts in her mind. He quickly picked up the book and took a few big steps to the door. Before he could reach the door handle, the door had already opened a crack. Three people as hard as steel and as solid as rocks have blocked the door, their faces serious. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Schools You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Schools Kasha was so scared that her whole body trembled. He felt a bit solemn in the atmosphere and immediately took a few steps back, his hand already pulling the revolver. The pistol had just exposed and came into contact with the dry and cold air in the room, and the three people in front of them had already stepped into the house. The leading man's body swayed, and his footsteps were naturally much faster and more solid than those of Kasia. The movement of the body is like a fierce beast waiting quietly beside its prey for a long time. If it doesn't make a move, it is already there. If it makes a move, it is as powerful as a deadly blow. Kasia was thinking about whether to shoot, but before she could even align her pistol, the three people facing the muzzle had already dodged, and a thick and hard palm had also grasped the barrel of the gun at that moment. The force of the mountain pressing down on it sank, and Kasia was like a pitiful ant in front of it. Then there was a crisp sound, and the honeycomb-shaped magazine of the revolver was also flicked open by steel-like fingers. The silver bullet shell, with only a hint of light shining faintly. At this moment, the other two also stood behind Kasia like a mountain, although not much taller than Kasia, they stood tall with a posture that pierced the blue sky. Young man, this kind of rough thing is not something that indecisive people like you should play with. The man in front of him looked at least thirty years old, with a clean shaved beard on his face and a rough voice, like his strength, with a heavy feeling. Kasia Tussos, right. Still the same question. Yes, may I ask if, comma, 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 were still interrupted. That's good, because of some indescribable reasons, you don't need to study at this imperial heavy industry school anymore. You are now a student at the St. Dorag Military School. We are here, of course, to pick you up. As for why, there are also some indescribable reasons, which I don't know. So don't ask, just come back with me honestly. By the way, my name is Bo Ting, and I will become your training coach and life instructor in the future. Please take care of me and don't cause any trouble just by going. Especially for students like you who don't have the courage to shoot but like to draw without hesitation. Bosi reset the drum and said, people who plating bullets with useless metal are also a bad hobby and enjoy doing some useless work. Before pulling out the gun next time, think carefully about whether to shoot or not. If you don't shoot, don't take out this kind of thing. This is the best catalyst for creating an atmosphere in the world. If you pull it out, you have to hit the enemy's head hard, like a venomous snake or a hunting dog, either one blow is fatal or one bite is hard to let go. Things that hesitate cannot have emotions in front of these metal tools. Bao Ting pulled out his gun and threw it to Kasha, and the person had already left the room. Let's go, take you to where you should go. Kasha sat on the military armored gift car parked in front of the Imperial Heavy Industry School with a more tumultuous mood. This is a steam locomotive painted black all over, with densely welded steel plates all around it. The combination of rivets and bolts gives it a unique beauty. The metallic and glossy tires, as well as the pitch black rubber wheels, are all spotless. Engraved on it is the bullet emblem of Webley Company. Bujin and Kasia sat together in the back seat, and when the password card key started the motorcycle, the deep and powerful engine sound was pleasing to the eye. The seats are soft, the ventilation system in the car is perfectly controlled by the small differential on the car, and the air has a light fresh smell, which seems to be the perfume left by the women who have taken this car. When Kasia relaxed and fell asleep, 
the car had already arrived at the foot of the Blanco Mountains to the east of Manoma. Several continuous snow peaks form the complete view of the Blanco Mountains, and the St. Dorag Military Academy is located within the mountains. Unlike the St. Dorag Theological Seminary located on the Bulu River, in order to train the most elite warriors and various specialized talents, the harsh terrain and harsh environment are the simplest way for students to have a taste without undergoing the baptism of the battlefield. At the foot of the mountain, there are several wide and hard roads, with layers of white ice already covering them. Beside the road were rows of street lamps that were fearless of the cold, all frozen into pillars of ice. The window was opened, and a dry cold wind swept in, as if trying to absorb all the moisture from Kasha's body. The cold beyond ordinary people's perception made him feel like he had fallen into the ice cellar even when wearing thick clothes. In just one breath, his lips had already turned purple, and the white breath he exhaled had not yet escaped, turning into frost at the corners of his nostrils and mouth. Alas, if you want to survive in a regular military academy, you don't know how much it will cost. Not to mention a three-dot star academy, you won't be able to get down without changing a few sets of bones. Bujin felt a little depressed and then slammed the car window shut. The admission to the military academy had already ended two days ago, but suddenly he received a notice from another student that he needed to go in person. He thought it was another talent recruited from the military academy, but it seemed like he was just an ordinary person. The flame of curiosity in his heart was extinguished by pouring cold water. Kasha was so cold that her whole body trembled, and it was not easy to wipe the white frost on her face with her hands. What is this thing? How? Through the cold airflow of the right dot sided continent ice, after undergoing extreme weather modifications along the way, the Blanco Mountains have become like this. No need to be surprised, there are many extreme weather conditions on the continent that belong to human beings, which is just a common one. You can get used to it in the future. Bo Ting looked calm, with an ordinary expression, but his mouth did not stop. Although we have challenged countless extreme weather conditions with more and more innovative technologies, the power of nature has always been irresistible to us. You will see many secret things about the Empire Continent and even the back-dot-sided continent in your future studies. If you work hard, even the right-dot-sided and left-dot-sided sides will be unknown. Some things on the continent can also be touched, of course, the first thing is that you need to pass in your future training and learning, Bo Ting still reminded. At the end of the road is a giant metal gate that is nearly 10 meters high, with teeth biting together. The armored gift car has a radio device that allows the door to be opened without the need for a password card. Sitting in the car, you can also hear the roaring sound of the steam mechanical transmission system operating under the cover of the mountains and rocks. The biting huge metal door slowly opened an opening through which the gift car passed. The armored gift car drove inside, and the sound of the wind blowing disappeared instantly. Behind the metal door is a tunnel made of cast steel, with incandescent lights overhead and steam pipes coated with anti-oxidation metal. They spiral upwards, some leading underground and others spreading with the tunnel to dazzling places. The tunnel is very deep and the end cannot be seen for a moment. There's still a section of the tunnel that's a bit long, Bujin said as he saw Seija's bulging eyes, bored and explaining on the side. At the front end, there is a huge parking lot where several tunnels converge, which is also made of steel plates. Bo Ting pointed to the front and gestured for Keja to look. The end of the tunnel suddenly became clear, and the lonely tunnel also became lively at this moment, finally meeting other people. This is a huge cavity dug out inside the mountain, divided into five layers. Wherever the eyes can see, there are all kinds of exquisite or ferocious vehicles, ranging from single-person driven motorcycles to giant heavy dot-duty trucks transporting war machinery. There are a huge number of them, with a dense and neatly arranged ant colony smell. There are also several other layers where various machine vehicles that operate using the computing power of analytical machines can be vaguely seen. Kasha and his armored gift car stopped on the first floor according to the prompts. Four people got off the car, 
took Keja up the conveyor belts distributed throughout the garage, and arrived at the end of the garage, which was also an interlocked steel door. It's really troublesome. Bao Ting took out the password card and inserted it. Steam hissed and spewed as the thick door slowly opened. All right, then we officially welcome you, Kasha Tussos, to attend the St. Dorag Military School. Bo Ting smiled and opened his body in front of the door. In front of him was a building between light and shadow, a true steel rose, for the justice of bolts and rivets. This is a building block made of steel, with a fixed steam pipeline and a model. The endless light brought by electricity, the precise meshing of gears for continuous transmission, and the endless operation of a super-analysis machine are the only things that are so unknown in front of us, as if they do not belong to a foreign world in the real world. In the continuous canyons of the mountains, there are also towering buildings surrounded by white steam, towering and majestic. There is a huge transparent curtain in the sky, which is a protective curtain made of steel skeleton and countless pieces of hexagonal high dot strength glass, blocking all the cold currents above the limit in the Blanco Mountains from outside. Six small maintenance airships are carefully maintaining them one by one. Although the low dot bearing capacity of each of their glass pieces reaches an astonishing hundreds of tons, even the most advanced sniper guns in the military can only leave a few white marks on them. It's currently nighttime and the roads of various sizes scattered like spider webs are bustling with crowds. The St. Dorag School receives nearly 100,000 new students every year. It is a gathering place for various elites from all over the empire, regardless of their status, status, family, or bloodline. As long as they have the ability, this place will serve as a springboard for all ambitious individuals. The number of people in five grades, combined with relevant personnel in various fields, makes this seemingly isolated foreign land always lively and extraordinary. The St. Dorag Military Academy is a true portrayal of the Empire's history, which was born with the Empire and has a history as long as the Empire itself. From every general in the army, expeditionary generals, to border governors, as well as the twelve knights of the Round Table, heavily armed generals, guards, special agencies, rows and rows legions, special mobile units, and elite groups and generals in every empire and army, almost all have the shadow of the St. Dorag Military Academy. Cassia followed behind Bujin, looking up at the unique buildings and the crowds passing by, everything was unprecedented to him. The whole school is incredibly huge, built against the foot of the snow-capped mountains on both sides of the canyon, with the shape of winding insects following the direction of the canyon. When they came to the place near the foot of the snow peak, rooms made of alloy steel plates were hard and laid in the black hard rock, which was piled up layer by layer like a ladder, and each layer had a solid corridor. This is a separate dormitory for students. Hello coach. The loud voice, with an impeccable salute posture, was greeted by the students in the hallway. Well, good evening. Bo Ting nodded one by one and replied, while Kasha followed behind with her head down. After walking a few floors, we arrived at the seventh floor corridor, where we could overlook some of the school's buildings, while the rest were mostly covered by the protruding mountains in the winding canyon. All right, this is your room. It's the standard configuration of the Samsung Academy of the Military Academy, and there's everything that belongs to you inside. Bo Ting came to an unlocked room, knocked on the door frame with his finger back, and said to Keja, who was looking up and down. The room door is also made of cold and hard metal alloy, with the words 1024 arranged with rivets. Kasha pushed open the door and entered, where there was a smell of new things, all in a cool blue and icy hue. The world once again opened a new door for him here. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Misunderstandings. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 Misunderstandings The room is neither big nor small, and it belongs to a size that is just right no matter how it looks. The metal door is facing the wardrobe, which is unexpectedly filled with clothes. From the formal attire required for the evening party to the casual attire required for daily wear, as well as the training clothing specially marked next to it, almost all occasions of clothing have been covered. 
From the introduction of information from Kasia to the military school, to the comprehensive preparation for Czech.in, the efficiency of military school personnel can be seen in a few aspects. Beside the wardrobe is a common single steel bed, followed by a desk on the other side of the room, also made of steel. Next to it is a delicate chair, and there is also a door on the wall, which leads to the bathroom. This is everything in the room, and of course, you can also count some things on the desk. Kasia threw the book in her hand onto the bed and sat at the desk, looking at a pile of new things in front of her. A military school identification card with colorful photos of Kasia and a happy smiling face on it. Below is the basic information about him. There is still a label of 1024, which is signed as the first three-star academy. Then there is a specially made red copper bank card with a gold border, which, as expected, bears the logo of a gold bank production and issuance. It is also accompanied by a simple instruction manual, which mentions one's own bank account, the original password of the bank card, and a monthly subsidy of 10,000 holy coins from the military academy. It is truly a school established by the empire, and its financial resources and generosity are not comparable to other schools. Kasia looked at the word 10,000 printed in lead, feeling both hot and excited in her heart. He quickly inserted the card into the slot fixed in the wall, which had an automatic steam output port for engagement. The mechanism on the wall, which displays numbers like a clock, quickly operates and stops at the number 10,000. The subsidy for the first month has already come down. Kasia smiled uncontrollably, only money is the best gift. He picked up the last card on the table and saw countless small gears exposed clearly. It was a password card with a simple number of 1024 engraved on it, followed by three stars representing the Samsung Academy. The password card is wrapped in a snow.white paper with standard black imperial text on the back. The above prompt suggests that after receiving the password card, new students should put it into the card slot as soon as possible, so that the super analysis machine can record the information of their enrollment in the school as soon as possible, in order to issue all the class information in the near future after the school starts, so that coaches can keep track of the students' learning and training progress at any time, and let the analysis machine arrange the most reasonable daily routine training plan for students. In the room where the sound insulation effect is very good and placed in the card slot, only the faint sound of gears biting and rotating can be heard. The military academy has its own super analysis machine, which has countless branches for hundreds of thousands of people in the school to use. After waiting for a few minutes, the password card was spit out. The smooth wall also cracked a hole together, inside which something was being printed. Kasia took the slightly warm printing paper, which emitted a strong ink smell. Kasia Tussos, first of all, congratulations on your smooth admission. Standard polite language, every school is a model. Your information has been fully collected, and with the cooperation of digital coaches and professors in related fields, the super analysis machine control terminal has fully planned your training and development. The course and training will start tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock sharp. Please do not eat any food from now on to avoid affecting the training effect. The signature is from the first three-star academy of the military academy. On the other side is written the location of tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock sharp, the biology building of the military academy. Biology building. By the way, I don't know which direction I majored in at the military school. Kasia then remembered a crucial point. He arrived at the school himself, seemingly in a hurry and didn't choose any courses. At Imperial Heavy Industries School, he majored in steam mechanical transmission and various knowledge related to steam turbines. But in the military school, he didn't even know how to classify courses in the military school. On his desk, except for a few cards, there was nothing else except a comprehensive map that roughly introduced the locations and functions of various buildings in the school. Didn't you already choose a direction in biology for me? Kasia looked at the black lead on the paper in a daze, but he didn't understand anything about biology. When it comes to the breeding cycle of blood flies on the battlefield and the social system of rotten wolves, he still knows some common sense things, 
but it should be considered as specialized knowledge in the field of biology, but it has not been touched upon at all. Because before the age of 17, he had focused his mind on the history of steam machinery and theology. He also thought that if he didn't make much progress in steam machinery, it wouldn't be bad to end up becoming a little envoy. The imperial government dispatched vehicles and houses, providing the most basic guarantee for daily life. An ordinary life is also a good choice for mothers and sisters. Kasha felt that she should ask her classmates around her. Everyone is in the same Samsung Academy and enrolls through formal channels, so she should know much more than him. Then I will go and fetch some water to drink by the way. I have become accustomed to having one meal a day on the train. Although I can tolerate not eating today and tomorrow, the feeling of hunger is not good. Drinking some water should not violate the rules. There are daily utensils in the cabinet under the desk, including a small pot. The cafeteria was spread throughout the entire school, and Keja took note of the nearest one and knocked on the door of 1023 next to him with a small kettle. Hello, Keja knocked on the door and heard a hollow voice. The doors of individual dormitories are opened by password cards, operated by steam power, and do not have door handles. Under the metal wall are fixed gears and transmission shafts, powered by the main furnace of the military academy. It is a huge furnace that is as hot as a volcano, and all steam comes from there. Hello, the person who opened the door was vigorously wiping their hair with a towel, tightly wrapped in a soft white bathrobe. A strong but not dull rose aroma that only top-dot-grade spices could possess filled the air. Her curvaceous body is as tall as Kasha, but her skin is not as fair and tender as that of a noble woman but rather a healthy and sunny complexion that showcases strength and personality. The most important thing is that she is a girl, still the kind who is very beautiful. Kasha had no idea that this accommodation was mixed up between men and women. When Bo Ting brought him over, he didn't even see the shadow of a female student in the hallway. And this girl has just finished taking a shower, her hair and face are covered in water droplets, with hurried marks. So the words that had been brewing for a long time completely rotted into my stomach. Apart from his mother, sister, and Noel, Kasha didn't have much contact with women. All he knew in a day was him buried in a steam factory, and besides piles of mechanical watches, the person who talked to him the most was Aunt Mary in the factory. However, Aunt Mary was already in her thirties, and having a belly full would be a disaster for anyone. In the learning class, the common people are very busy, and after class, there is no trace of them, while the children of the nobility are the kind who are unwilling to lower their status and talk to them. Of course, Kasha and the others will not find it unpleasant on their own. It is uncertain which child's father is the big boss of the small town factory, after all, they all rely on working in the factory to make a living. Are you going to the cafeteria to fetch water? Kasia was very nervous, her face a little red, her mouth purred, and she had already spoken. He immediately regretted it, so he eagerly hoped that this beautiful girl would refuse in person. Ah, no need. Success. Kasia was excited in her heart, and it seemed that she needed to understand the specific situation around her before doing anything next time. Her understanding of military schools was only superficial. Wait for me a moment, let's go together. I happen to want to go too. A girl has no self-awareness as a girl, how can she casually agree to an invitation from a boy? Kasha saw the door closed and her heart was full of activity, but her footsteps had already begun to move, ready to quietly slip away. But the next moment, the closed metal door opened again, and the girl in the dress had already walked out. At this moment, Kasha finally saw the full face of the girl, her hair slightly leaning towards red, still feeling moist and moist, long and hanging straight from her waist. The dress is a light blue that doesn't match the color of the hair, with wooden slippers on her feet, banging loudly in the corridor connected by steel plates. Take it. The tone was as plain as before. Without realizing Kasia's carefree thoughts, the girl walked over and threw the kettle to him. 
Then he continued to tidy up his wet hair with his hands, and the steam spread out, spilling it all the way. Didn't that chubby guy in auto ring notify you of the time? You came a few minutes too fast. The girl's voice was somewhat unhappy, but she didn't reach a state of anger. The next time this happens, our company won't welcome you, okay? The girl turned her head and stared straight at Kasha's enigmatic face, her eyes warning. Actually, it's just that you seem to have mistaken someone. That, I don't know a chubby guy named Otto Chuan. Kasha avoided her gaze, her face as ugly as it seemed, and her apologies couldn't be concealed. He stopped and the girl followed suit. Selmer Bendok. No, Kasha Tussos, Kasha replied. Catherine Webley. The girl was polite. That means you were not introduced by Otto Chuan. Please confirm again. Yes, Kasia nodded apologetically, although he didn't know where he had gone wrong. Then he turned around with Yi Jielin and vaguely saw a bear-like figure standing in front of room 1023 in the seventh-floor corridor fenced with high-dot-strength glass, gently knocking on the door, although the sound was inaudible. Sai, don't worry about him, let him wait. It's important to fetch water, I've been hungry all day. Yi Jielin reluctantly continued to wear wooden slippers and stomped hard on the ground. Show me your ID card, Yi Jielin said to Kasia in a tone that was no different from a command. Kasia took out her identity card and was snatched away by Yi Jielin. 1024, you are the person living next to me. The legendary super genius. Yi Jielin held the sign and showed surprise. She couldn't help but stop and carefully looked up and down at Kasha, her eyes focused on the opening on her chest where cotton was still exposed, and the wound on her chin that had been scabbed for several days. You are already a celebrity, do you know? It took half a day to sweep through the entire first to fifth three-star academy, and everyone was curious about you. Even the military academy could make an exception for you and be called a super genius by the people of our first three-star academy. Yi Jielin's words were light and her eyes were filled with endless gloating. I've only been here for less than an hour now and I'm not very clear about these things. Can you tell me something? Kasia felt a sense of unease growing in her heart. He remembered where he had gone and where the students respected and saluted him, and now he felt that the coach who picked him up seemed to be not an ordinary person, at least not an ordinary school teacher. He should be a very powerful kind. But why did he come to the military academy? Kasha herself had no idea. If, as Yi Jielin said, he is truly a genius and doesn't believe himself, then he doesn't expect others to believe him. Noel. Kasha's heart darkened, but she couldn't rule out this idea. After all, Noel's departure happened on the same day as his enrollment. I'm hungry, I don't have that mood. Yi Jielin readily refused, but it was intentional no matter what. Kasha's heart was in turmoil, but the two were not familiar and could not ask anyone to do anything. Hey, is there anything unusual about you? After observing for so long, I haven't seen the self-awareness you deserve as a genius. Halfway through, Yi Jilin opened up the topic again. I don't know, but I'm also unclear about how I got into school, Kasia said. I don't think I'm a genius, from all aspects. When it comes to my pride, I don't know if I can repair complex mechanical watches. In short, the professors at the military academy are much more experienced than us, and they probably have unique perspectives. Since you are the person they personally brought in, you probably have a talent that you haven't even discovered yourself, Yi Jielin helped analyze and nodded on her own. So, should you accept my invitation to come to my alliance? The little fairy finally revealed her true colors. It's rare to have such good luck. If you don't seize the opportunity, it's not my style. This is an invitation to Kasia and also a declaration. End of this chapter